podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. The show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Sunday, March 7th, 2021. This is episode 1777. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Simply Safe. Get simple, professional monitoring day and night. Right now, get a free security camera when you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash twit. You'll also get a 60-day risk-free trial. And by ExpressVPN. Stop letting people keep logs of what you do online and protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash techguy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, yes, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography. We got your smartphones, we got your smart watches. We got everything with a chip in it, augmented reality, virtual reality, real reality. No, we don't cover that so much. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or uh, Canada outside that area. Hey, still call. Just use Skype. Won't cost you anything. 8888-ASK-LEO. The uh, website where, uh, you know, everything we talk about goes is techguylabs.com. That's a good idea because, um, so, you know, I know you're busy. You're doing stuff. You're listening with half an ear. Half a brain, two thirds of your left hand. So you want to you want to be able to keep track of what's going on. It's okay. You don't have to the show notes beautifully uh, scribed by our official scribe James Ruvo live there, and it's free. There's no sign up or anything. You just wander into TechGuyLabs.com, and everything you're looking for will be made available to you. TechGuyLabs.com. France and Spain. It's just figures. France and Spain decided, you know, we're going to tax these big tech guys. France has actually done this since 2019. Spain started this year under pressure from voters to make U.S. tech giants pay a greater share of taxes. So, uh, so they started taxing uh, 3% on ad revenue in France, uh, 3% on some uh, of Google's business in Google and other but mostly Google's business in uh, Spain. So what Google do? They're raising the rates for advertisements in France and Spain by 2%. <laughs> you know, I think that maybe there's a lesson there. You raise a tax on these guys, uh, they're just going to pass it along. Just going to say, okay, fine. Hey, we're, we're generous, they said. We only passed along 2% out of the 3%. We only made our customers pay for a third, two thirds of the uh, of the new tax. We'll pay a little bit, one percent. We can deal with that. It's hard for these companies. They're international now. India, uh, as you know, there's a some sort of uh, farmers uh, boycott or picket or revolt in uh, protests by Indian farmers. It made headlines, of course, around the world. But uh, but the Indian government. Doesn't like, doesn't like it that uh, Facebook and Twitter and WhatsApp are uh, are publicizing this and even being used to organize by the Indian farmers and their proxies. So they're saying they're sending written warnings to India-based employees of Facebook and Twitter saying, we will arrest you if you don't pull those things down. Yikes. It is it is the rule in India that these companies have to have local uh, representatives, in-country representatives. And now we know why. The rules require tech companies to appoint executives who are resident in India specifically to deal with government requests, including a contact person for, quote, 24-7 coordination with law enforcement agencies and officers to ensure compliance. They don't mention this, but... Yeah, they're in country. They can be arrested, too. We'll arrest you. Okay, thanks. Big Tech has its own uh, issues in the U.S. President Biden on Friday named a guy named Tim Wu. He's a uh, Columbia University law professor. Got named to the National Economic Council. He's special assistant to the president for technology and competition policy. 
he is also one of the most outspoken critics of big tech. He says Facebook should be broken up. Google should be broken up. Now he has an ear in the White House. So uh, so those companies who perhaps thought, oh, now that the Trump administration is over, we can just go back to business as usual. Maybe not. Did you see the article in the Los Angeles Times? Of course it's in the Los Angeles Times. Californians are not leaving the state en masse, but they are leaving San Francisco. <laughs> so uh, uh, there, there were stories, mostly in other states, especially Texas, that everybody's leaving California. Will the last person to leave California turn off the lights because uh, of their perceived anti-business attitudes and their high state taxes, et cetera? Well, it turns out, this is from a, a, a research fellow at the California Policy Lab, Natalie Holmes. While a mass exodus from California clearly did not happen in 2020, the pandemic did change some historic patterns. Fewer people moved into the state to replace those who left. But not a huge drop in the state. However, take a look at San Francisco County, which is kind of the focus of uh, big tech in the state and even in the country. That's where Twitter is. Facebook's down the road a piece in Silicon Valley. Net domestic exits, people moving out of the Bay Area, I guess that includes Silicon Valley, have increased 178% compared to pre-pandemic trends. But they're not moving out of the California area. They're moving to uh, up into the mountains. Well, I don't blame them. Better, better skiing up there. I wonder what will happen when the summer comes. Maybe they'll come back down. I don't know. They're going to the mountains, L.A. Times. I love this headline in the L.A. Times. Californians are leaving the state, but they are leaving San Francisco. <laughs> and most of that has to do with tech companies saying, hey, you don't have to work here anymore. I mean, you, you work here, but you don't have to come into the office anymore. And it looks like this is going to be a long-term trend. Companies like Salesforce, Salesforce headquartered in San Francisco, have said, yeah, you know, when the pandemic's over, that's fine. It worked out okay. You can continue to work home at home. They said, come in one, two, three days a week, but you can work from home. Companies like Twitter say you never have to come back. And more and more companies are saying that. You know, the work from home thing's working out all right. Saves us money, right? Salesforce might be kind of thinking this isn't a great thing. They just built a giant new headquarters in San Francisco. Giant. Now it's mostly empty. Hmm. But it does save money, you know. I mean, I guess they can lease it out to somebody else. I mentioned this yesterday. It's worth mentioning again. Um, on Tuesday, Microsoft put out a patch for what's called a zero-day flaw, an exploit in Microsoft's email server exchange that was being uh, used by Chinese hackers even as we patched it. That's the worst kind of, of thing. You know, usually when there's a flaw in software companies find out about it and fix it before the bad guys do in this case the bad guys found out about it before microsoft did and according to brian krebs krebs on security at least thirty thousand organizations across the united states that's organizations not people have been hacked by an unusually aggressive chinese cyber espionage unit it's focused on stealing email from these victim organizations. 30,000 organizations. It's not, you know, you probably don't use Exchange. Most uh, individuals don't. Your company might, though. It's very popular in businesses, including a, a, a significant number of not only small businesses, but big businesses, towns, cities, and local gov governments. Ugh. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is an interesting attack because... And I think you could kind of say the same thing about the, the solar winds attack, which was attributed to Russia a couple of months ago. These companies are not necessarily looking to wage war, cyber warfare on us. It's more espionage, like among uh, other companies that were targeted, pharmaceutical companies, so that the hackers could steal uh, recipes for medications, including, of course, the COVID vaccine. So that's that. It's that kind of, I guess, that kind of espionage. Even if you 
patched on Tuesday, the day Microsoft released its fixes, still a chance there that this software is on your server. In fact, if you're running Exchange, according to uh, Stephen Adair, president of a security company that first noticed this on January 6th, if you're running Exchange and you haven't fixed it, well, there's a very high chance you're, you've been compromised. Oh, boy. Just thought I'd put out the word. You could read my email. It's nothing interesting. <laughs> no, no, no. Trust me, I don't even want to read my email. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number, 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. TechGuyLabs.com, the website. We're going to uh, get to your calls in just a bit. Well, this is a, isn't this a nice suit? Do you like my suit? Uh, it's Sunday. I dressed up. It's uh, going to church day. No, I. It's uh, this is a suit that the folks at Taylor Store sent me, and that's a three piecer. Look at that. So I had bought a suit from them, a black suit, uh, a short while ago, and so they had my size, and they so they just thought, well, we'll send you, we'll send you one of these. This is this is what they wear in Sweden. They're Swedish. It's kind of a what do you call that? It's pla it's a plaid ish, but it's a subtle. Do I look like a used car salesman? I want to look like, what do I want to look like? A banker. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so that's really cool what Taylor Store does. They were a sponsor, I should mention, uh, in the past. And that's when I started using them. They, um, um, they, I look like a preacher, great. They, um, <laughs> They have an app called Size Colon Me. So you take a picture of yourself, like a police camera. You put it on the floor, you take it a full standing, and then a sideways. And then um, they do, they'd do. start with custom shirts. So I got a bunch of shirts from them, which I really like. And then um, they added pants. And they finally added suits. And I thought, oh, I need a suit. The suit's a little different. So you do the picture, and then they send you, and I should have saved it. It's the funniest thing, like a, <clears throat> a suit made out of canvas or some, you know, cheap kind of, not quite cheesecloth. It's more like canvas. And then you say, well, and you put it on, and you, and you send them pictures back. You say, it was a little loose to, you know, let it out here, take it in there, like that kind of thing. They sent me two of those. I did two. When they, and the second one fit perfectly, like this. And they said, okay, good. And then they made the suit. But now they have the measurements. So they were able to send, they just had the blue, which is very nice of them. They're not even a sponsor anymore. They sent me a uh, another one. It's a nice suit. It's a vest. It's like, I think the suit I bought was like a couple hundred bucks. I think this one is a lot more. Lisa says she thinks it's like $2,000. I don't think it's that expensive, is it? It's nice. And it fits perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. Taylor Store. In fact, yeah, you know what? They're nice people. Uh, give them a, a, a look at taylorstore.com, T-A-I-L-O-R. They were a sponsor. I, you know, I think, I think they might be, I should be fair, I think they might be coming back. I'm not sure. But not until the fall, maybe, or something like that. <laughs> She's got her lasso of truth. Is that what it's called? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on the Mad Magazine cover, it's the lasso of tooth, but I think it's supposed to be. Did he see? Did she see that sitting on your desk? Is that why this is going on? I don't, I don't know. You She's never tricky. know. With <laughs> Professor Laura, you never know. Wonder Woman is here, a.k.a. Kim Schaffer. Our phone angel. She does the hard job here. I have the easy job. I just talk. She has to pick up the phone, say hello, find out what you're talking about, all that stuff. It's days like today. I'm glad this is radio. Why? Because you look like you're going to a wedding or a funeral. <laughs> and I'm, I'm still in pandemic. Uh. <laughs> well, I was, ta yeah, I was talking about this off the air. But the chat room wanted to know. It's a... Uh, former sponsor of ours, Taylor Store, sent me a nice suit. And so That's I thought, great. it's a three-piece suit. Lovely. Do I look like, is it that serious or do I... I no, it's really nice. You you could be getting married in that. <laughs> I could be getting married in that, yeah. Yeah. 
I got married in a tuxedo. Okay, but you know, a lot of people over, don't do that anymore. We didn't have any guests at our wedding. Yeah. It was just me, Lisa, the preacher, and uh, but then we got the wedding package so that included a bartender and a and a person <laughs> passing around hors d'oeuvres, which is a little weird. <laughs> to you too? Yeah. The Christian goes up and says, "Would you like an hors d'oeuvre? No thanks." <laughs> Until Lisa, "Would you like an hors d'oeuvre? No thanks." Would you like an order? <laughs> we eventually we sent them home and the bartender too. But uh, yeah, we were che we we got an, a wedding package, but uh, we didn't invite anybody because we just thought you know, just be the two of us, romantic like. You should have downgraded on the package. <laughs> they didn't have uh, just the. the that was actually, it. I think we did the that elopement the package. I think it was called the elopement package, but it still had a cocktail waiter and a bartender. Oh, that's pretty. Funny. It's very strange. Preacher was great though. He had a nice Irish accent. He was so good. Ooh, I love that accent. Pa Potter, he called himself. <laughs> Padre? Potter. Potter. Oh, Potter. Potter, yeah. I don't know if he was a potter or what, but he was a... <laughs> he said, oh, you're where you wear your wedding rings. It's two hearts entwined. And when you put on your ring, you think you've got the heart of your, of your loved one on your ring finger there. That's what it is. And I thought, oh, that's nice. That's romantic. That'll be $150, please. <laughs> that was great. It was a good deal. Sounds good. Who should I? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Lake Tahoe. Okay. Another destination okay. wedding. Okay. Uh, a destination. <laughs> Julian. Thank you, Julie. Julie. Oh. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kim. Hello, Julie. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Um, I am calling for my stepmom. She's 84, and she listens regularly, so she asked me if Aww. I'd give you a call. What's her name? Her name is Tony. Hi, Tony. Yep, she's there. I'm not in the same room with her. That's fine. What I'm in Northern California. She's in Southern. But oh, what? you know what? You're a very good daughter-in-law, I must say. Well, thank you. Yeah. I try. Yeah. <laughs> we try. So what, so. Can we, what can we do for Tony? She is running Windows 7 on her computer. And yeah. she really doesn't want to have to upgrade because she doesn't want to learn a new system. But she's concerned about security because she does all of her banking, you know, on her computer. So is there something that you can recommend she do? How should she deal with this? Windows 7, uh, as you know, uh, we made a big deal about it uh, a year ago now. Gosh, it's been a year. Uh, January 2020 uh, or 2019. When... Uh, what year is this? 2020. Yeah, January 2020. When uh, when Microsoft said it's it's at what they call its end of life, we're not going to send out fixes anymore. And of course, what that means is if anything bad, any uh, security flaws discovered, it won't be fixed. The bad guys will know about it, but you won't be. There's nothing you can do to defend yourself. If you're going online, if you're not going online, it'd be fine. But if you're going online, you're running a risk. Um, okay, I'm going to say a few things. I'm going to answer your question up front because you deserve that. She, if she only goes to her bank and nowhere else, m might be okay. Just got to be really careful. Don't use it for email because that's stuff coming in over the transom. And, you know, if there's something in the email, and it could be just, it could be an attachment, but it could also be just an email that's a web page and, and has malicious content in it. It could also attack her. So no email, no surfing anywhere else, just your bank. That's that's the answer. There's no the antivirus is still sort of run, but most of them are phased out. Even your browser now is no longer getting updated. It is kind of the end of the line for Windows 7. Okay, that's part 1 answering your question. Part 2 is Windows 10, which is the upgrade and is free by the way. Uh it looks exactly like Windows 7. You could probably sneak in in the middle of the night and do it, and Tony wouldn't even know. I swear to you. I swear to you. I, you know, I, 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 I understand, Tony. I love Windows 7. It was the best version of Windows. It was great. But 10 looks so much like it, I don't think you're going to see a big difference. So that's one way to keep up to date. And, and Microsoft, which technically uh, charges for that upgrade about 100 bucks, they didn't ever turn off the feature that lets you just go and upgrade it. So she could just for free go and upgrade it. Um, now, that's a little complicated. She's probably not going to want to go through all the steps, but you can do that. The thing I would really say, and I, I'm i firm believer, I think Windows for most people, Windows is designed for a company that has an IT department. It's designed for somebody who has support, 
who people can come over and fix it, keep it secure, do all that stuff. It's a, it's really a business operating system. It's widely used at home because that's what people use at work, and they go, "Oh, I'm going to use it at home." But honestly, it's way overcomplicated for the simple things Tony's probably doing. Unless Tony's designing rocket ships, or maybe she's a photographer doing photo editing. Most of the things she does are web-based banking email, that kind of thing. And for that, an inexpensive Chromebook would be a great choice. It's automatically up to date. It doesn't get malware. She'll feel very comfortable with it because it's basically the Chrome browser and nothing else. So the user interface is very simple. It's a browser. But for most people, unless you have a compelling reason, maybe she's a gamer, I don't know, a compelling reason to use Windows, I would stay, say use an iPad or a Chromebook. They're much more secure, much simpler to use. And I'm not saying that to be ageist. I'm saying that for everybody. It, it's really a much better way to go. So she can, if she's really careful, use Windows 7. Don't go anywhere. Don't use any email. Just go to your bank. But even then, it's a little risky because there's stuff floating around. We call it the uh, kind of endemic viruses floating around the Internet. It's always risky without those patches. Chrome OS would be a better choice. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So I don't know if that if Tony is open to that notion or not. The good news is about Chrome uh, Chrome OS, Julie, is they're cheap. Are you still there? That sounds like a great solution. Yeah. A great solution. Yeah. Yeah. A few hundred dollars. Yeah. It's a laptop. If you want, if she sometimes if you have vision issues, you need a bigger screen. You can get a Chrome box instead, which is a little box that attaches to a large monitor. She could still use her Windows computer monitor if she wants and keyboard. The Chrome box. Yeah, if no, you look she, at that. no issues. No issues. With yeah. All right. That. Yeah. And is it a laptop she's iPhone. using or a desktop? It's a desktop. Okay. It's a desktop. Yeah. But she does have an iPhone. So I don't know if it'd be time to switch her over to an iPad, you know, some sort of a Mac. She already knows how to use the iPad because it's the iPhone, only it's big. Right. So uh, I would look at the new iPad Air. It would be an excellent choice. She could do her banking on it. Wait, she do, what else does she do besides banking? She, she does her emails, her banking. She does a little bit of property management. And so, you know, she needs to sometimes have pictures on file that, you know, yeah, she, she do all that. runs. She could do that on the on the web. As long as she can do it on the web, she could do it uh, yeah. on an iPad or a Chromebook. iPad's nice. It's a little it's a little more elegant. Um, mm -hmm. But but a Chromebook or a Chromebox would be more like her computer. Okay. Well, I will talk to her and see. It, the the Mac would be easy. I run a Mac, and so I'm always trying to help ah. her on her computer, which I don't use. So there's so a good, there's a really challenge. important thing. I used to ask people, well, who's you're gonna, who are you gonna get your support from? Cause, right. Because what they know is what you should get. <laughs> so if yeah. if you're Julie, if you're supporting Tony, a Mac would be a, get her a MacBook Air. These new MacBook Airs are beautiful. She'll feel very comfortable. It's more of a change, oddly enough to in a MacBook that it would be from 7 to 10, you know. But okay. I just think Windows is asking for trouble in general. Well, she's always had trouble with it. Yeah, always. of course she has. So, of course she yeah. has. Okay. So, so the question really is, who's your tech guy? What does your tech guy use? Julie, you're the tech yeah. guy. Julie, I'm the tech guy, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. Hey, trust me. As the tech guy, I know. It's a burden, isn't it? <laughs> No, it's not. It's just Aww. a challenge sometimes. Tony, I hope you I hope you get what we're saying here, Tony. Uh, it's if it, 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 you want life to be easy, you want to do the things you want to do. I think that's the the a safer way to do it. Then you don't have to worry about viruses at all, which I think is Great. a good thing. Yeah. Okay, Julie. Thank you. So thank much. you. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. I'm going to mention as long as we're hanging out, you and me. I think it would be a good time to mention our sponsor, Simply Safe. We'll get back to the show in just a second. But first, let me tell you about the simply the best way to protect your home right now. If you've got half an hour to spare, you're never going to have to worry about a break in at home ever again with Simply Safe. It's just that easy to set it up. And you don't have somebody traipsing through your house, you don't have them drilling holes in your wall. It's the kind of thing you could do uh, listening to uh, the podcast <laughs> if you want or, you know, playing a game practically. It's incredibly easy to customize your home. 
Here's what you do. Go to simplysafe.com slash twit. Choose the sensors you need. They've got everything from glass break, motion, window or door opening. They even have things like water sensors. So you can put one near the, I would put near one uh, near the um, water heater. If you've ever had a water heater lake, you'll know you'll be glad you have this. You can have cameras. And then it'll come to your house in, in, in under a week. So by the time you hear the show next week, you and your whole family will be going to bed safe and feeling secure. Simply safe, easy to install, peel and stick, put it where you want, get exactly what you want, no more, no less. And then without a contract, without a month, you know, a, a, a lock in, the Simply Safe professionals take over, monitoring your home 24 7. We're talking no contract, no hidden fees, no installation costs, very affordable. Less than 15 bucks a month for professional grade monitoring with, with no obligation. I, I, it's just the right way to go. Protect your home, protect your family, Simply Safe. It's incredibly easy to customize your home. Go to simplysafe.com slash twit today. I like it so much I actually got it for my kids. Because uh, they're renters, but it makes it very easy for them to, to move to another house, take it with them. And I feel safe about them even though they're not living at home anymore. That's a nice feeling too. Get one for the whole family. Simplysafe.com slash twit. Pick the, pick the sensors you need and get a free security camera when you order today. That's a very good deal. Also, a 60-day, two-month risk-free trial. So there's absolutely nothing to lose. Go to This is really a great deal. Simplysafe.com slash twit. This is the base station. It's, a, it's the toughest thing I've ever seen. It works. I just love them. Simplysafe.com slash twit now's the time to get it it's a great deal you get the free security camera 60 day risk free trial simplysafe.com slash twit thank you for supporting the show simply safe thank you for supporting the podcast by going to that address simplysafe.com slash twit leo laporte the tech guy and as always this time of the show and this week time of the week it's time to talk about automotive technology Fortunately, we have an expert, not me, Sam Abul Samad. He is a principal researcher at Guidehouse Insights, where he writes about automotive technology. He also has a Wheel Bearings podcast. It's called Wheel Bearings at wheelbearings.media. This guy knows automotive technology. All the way from Ypsilanti, Michigan, Sam Abul Samad. Hello, Sam. Hello, Leo. How are you today? You're sitting in. I'm great. By the way, You're thank you for. You're in that suit. Oh, I thought I'd dress up. You should be driving this Cadillac with that suit on. <laughs> I'm driving my Ford Mustang Mach-E and loving it. I want to thank you for the recommendation. I ordered it in November 2019, and I finally got it a couple of weeks ago, and it's just fantastic. And you should be getting your first OTA update in the not-too-distant future. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. then my Android should will be work. Coming. <laughs> yep, will be should nice. be coming in the next, in the next <laughs> couple of weeks, I think. But uh, I'm using the iPhone. They have it. It's called Pack, phone as a key. Yep. And uh, it's not, you know, I had to erase it and start and do it again because it lost track of my pack. But uh, it's really cool that you don't have to carry a key fob with you just with your phone. And everybody who doesn't always have their phone on them, you can just hop in the car and drive off. I like that. That's right. So, why are you sitting in front of an Escalade, my friend? Um, well, recently on um, MacBreak Weekly, you and the, the crew there have been talking a lot about uh, augmented reality. Actually, on Windows Weekly, too, and a lot of the podcasts, you've been talking about augmented it's reality. It's a hot and topic. Reality. Are you kidding? It is. Yeah. And um, so, for those who can't wait for Apple to finally introduce some AR glasses or goggles or you know get their hands on a Microsoft HoloLens, um, if you want, you can actually get some augmented reality stuff today um, on the you know on the new Cadillac Escalade, uh, which has an uh, an augmented reality mode in the instrument cluster. So the the Escalade has this amazing OLED display system. There's actually three displays. It spans 37 inches across. So there's a, a smaller touch screen on the left-hand side that lets you select some things. And then there's the, the larger center, uh, center uh, infotainment display on the right above the, the center stack. And then in front of you is the instrument cluster. And it's all OLEDs. Really looks gorgeous, just beautiful. But... Um, the instrument cluster display, you can switch between showing what look like traditional analog gauges uh, or there's a night vision system uh, and there's also uh, an augmented reality display 
system. So when you're using navigation, what what it does that's is cool. It, it looks like I'm looking out the window, but that's really yeah. from a camera in my dashboard. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's, yeah, it's actually the, the camera that's up on the windshield that it uses for your lane centering. Could you drive? Uh, your, your, could you drive your, just your, looking down at the instruments? I guess you could almost. You could, but it's not recommended. You, yeah. It's always better to keep your eyes on the actual road. Um, and but but one of the cool things it does when you're using the uh, using navigation, it actually projects the navigation instructions on it, overlays it on the actual camera view. That's really cool. So if you're watching the video right now, you can see it. You'll see there's an arrow, you know, on the lane that I'm in. But you know, it's coming up to. Uh, a, a turn, uh, it'll show you, it shows you above each of the lanes, uh, projects over the lanes, you know, which one, where are you going to turn? And then it shows you an arrow at, you know, a, that looks like it's floating above the intersection. As you get closer to it, it gets larger and it shows, it flashes for the turn signal and everything. It's, it's pretty cool. And this is kind of an interim step. Um, next year when they, when Cadillac launches their new Lyric, uh, electric crossover, it's actually going to have an Ahmed and reality heads up display. So Which that will, will display act, on the windshield. Yeah, and it'll uh, it's actually a, a multi-plane HUD. So today, uh -huh. if you've ever used a heads-up display, it looks like it's you know it looks like your gauges and stuff are floating over the right. the edge of the hood. Um, this will actually have a multi-plane display, so it will actually overlay appear to overlay right on the road surface. The arrows for you That's know when where cool. you're supposed to turn. That's kind of yeah, cool. it is. And it's a and lot it safer because you're still looking out the window. Exactly, you're looking. You're actually looking at where you're going. Right. And that's that's actually a better uh, better solution for this. And we're actually going to see that on a bunch of vehicles coming over the next two, three, four years. Um, but it's you know we're starting to get you know these uh, these new kinds of display systems uh, being put into cars that will um, hopefully give us better situational awareness. You'll be less likely to miss your turn. You know, I know this is you know with navigation, this is something that often happens because you're yeah, not but you shouldn't be looking at the map all yeah, the time. Yeah, but I okay, fine, but I blame GPS lag a lot of times. So this is a that, problem. That is part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. It, because it says turn, but you're already like, you're either just a foot away or you're already past it. Turn. And it's like, no. And that's dangerous. And I that happens a lot. Um, and that that is getting better. That's, okay. That situation is getting better. So there's less, there's less latency in the GPS. It takes and, a while you know, to update your location relative to where you really are. So yeah. the GPS thinks you're farther back than you are. And uh, I, I think everybody must have experienced this a little bit. I don't know if the problem is the phone, the car, the GPS system itself. I'm not sure where it lies, but certainly with with, with phone projection systems, you know, there there's latency. Like if you're using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, there's latency added in there because you know it's got to go from the car to the yeah. phone and back again. Um, I think but, GPS you know, also is a little slow, and but I even, yeah, even with GPS, there's still some latency yeah, there. Yeah. Um, you know, but with this, because it's you know it's projecting information, you know, overlaying it on the view you know, of what you're seeing, it's actually, it's putting it up there well before you get to an intersection and putting it, so it looks like it's actually at the place where you're supposed to turn. So wow. it, 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 it's, so cool. uh, it gives you a much better view. It, 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 the latency doesn't matter as much in this case. Yeah. I can't, I'm excited. I really feel like, and are, do you feel like these are steps towards self-driving that that's why they're making all these features? Uh, not not so much because you know, with self driving you don't actually need all this information. Well, that's true. It's for the car, not, not you. Yeah. You know, yeah. The car the car needs to know where it is, but you don't need to know all of this. So this is more for for human drivers just to have better situational awareness right. of where you are, where you know when you're supposed to turn. It's driver assist. Yeah, and, and yeah, God knows we need assist. that. You would have thought in the pandemic, auto fatalities would have gone down. Mm -hmm. They were up significantly in the U.S. in 2020. Yeah, well, the problem was with, with less traffic on the road, a lot of people <laughs> decided, oh, now's my opportunity Speed. to go and do stupid stuff <laughs> on the road and yeah. drive at ridiculous speeds. Yeah. And, and that got a lot of people into trouble. So, so. there is uh, the National Safety Council and others are really pushing for more of these kinds of technologies uh, to help drivers do a better job and to have the cars help drivers do a better job. And I am I'm all for that. Um, because it's yeah, dangerous. Well, in Europe, 
yeah, in Europe they have the Euro NCAP system, the new European New Car Assessment Program, which is their equivalent of our, you know, the five-star rating system for safety. And they are currently in the process of updating it. You know, even here we we update it every few years as vehicles improve and make it tougher and tougher to get a five-star rating. Their their next generation Euro NCAP is going to have much tougher standards for the performance of the driver assist systems. And it will include, you know, you'll get scores for things like having a driver monitor system, uh, like the one that's in uh, GM Super Cruise or it's, that's in your Mustang Mach-E. Yeah. I, I like the assist that the Mach-E gives me, which I think that's nice. And I think it does help me stay out of trouble. It'll even stop if a car, if there's a something in the road in the in my way, it'll stop for me, which is, I think, a, a good thing. Yeah, most, most new cars will do that. Yeah. Mr. Sam Abul Samid, he is a principal researcher at uh, Navigant, I'm sorry, now Guidehouse Insights. Same company, new name. He's also a podcaster, yep. wheelbearings.media. If you love listening to cars, uh, you, you know, and talking about cars, wheelbearings.media is the place uh, to go. Sam, what are, you, what are you driving this week? I like to ask every week. What do you, what do you got? Uh, I still have the Escalade, uh, and on Tuesday I'm getting a new Honda Odyssey minivan. Man, life is tough for Sam. <laughs> do you ever wish you could just drive your Miata and forget about it? I, I do that sometimes. Yeah. So I don't want to drive a new car. That this week. <laughs> it's supposed to get into the 60s this week. So. Enjoy the weather. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Nice. I was, yeah, I just saw this story. Fatalities are up dramatically in 2020. Just yeah, crazy. I know. It, I mean, we some of the you know, we started seeing some of those trends, you know, middle of last year, and uh, it's it's not good. Um, it's it's really unfortunate that you know a lot of people took advantage of the fact that there were fewer people driving around and you know went out and did a lot of really stupid things, you know, driving at very high speeds. Man. And there may have been more drinking. I think sometimes yeah. uh, the the fact that the roads are clogged actually keeps us slow and keeps us safe. It may not be that yeah, they, in fact, I think some of the evidence was it wasn't that people were driving faster than was safe, but because they were able to drive faster when accidents happened, uh, they, they tended to be fatal more often, which I thought was, yeah, it's just, it's just bizarre. You would have thought, God, the roads were empty the first half of 2020, but that was a recipe for disaster. May also be that the people who were out driving were a little bit more of risk takers, maybe. No, it, 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 I think that definitely was part of the situation, you yeah. know, that people were taking more, a lot more risks yeah. than they normally would. Yeah. Wild. That escalates yeah. cool. I really like that. I, I uh, I can't wait to see the hand, uh, uh, heads up stuff. That's going to be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. The, we'll, we should be getting a look at that uh, in person later this year because uh, the the lyric uh, goes into production early in 2022. Right. So we should be getting a look at it cool. probably this fall. Confirming Lisa's adamant decision to only lease because she says in three years it's, the technology is going to be much advanced. I think she's probably right. Mm -hmm. I love my. I, I I wanted to buy this Mustang. I just love yeah. it. I <laughs> love it. I, I you know I tend to keep my cars for a long time. You That's know for the eight to ten years or more. Smart thing to do. Obviously. So yeah. you know so I I buy you know because you know, I like not having a car payment. Right. But uh, you know I haven't had a car payment in several years now. But, uh, well you know if. If, if you want to be, you know, if you want to have the latest tech, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm in a fortunate situation because I get to drive the latest stuff. Yeah, you're all, all right. Time anyway. You're good. Yeah. But. Steve Jobs used to uh, have six month leases. He always wanted a new car. Right. Well, because he, he could get away with that no uh, license. You know, in California. You don't have to have that license, <laughs> no license. Right in there for, for the first six months. He wouldn't like it now uh, because you do. You have these paper licenses that are just like real licenses and fully identifiable. And, uh, yeah, yeah, they don't, you don't have to, you can't drive around with light without a license plate anymore. Even with a brand new car it comes with a license plate. Yeah. That's, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know why Steve jobs didn't want a license plate, but I can imagine. Thank you, Sam. That's the cars he drove, you know, he drove those nice Mercedes. He loved his Mercedes. Yep. Mercedes SL. Yeah. The, the, the big ones. Uh, have a good week. Are you going to be on Twit soon? Have we booked you uh, for a Twit? Uh, not yet. Well, uh, I'm sure we I'll will. Let, let Jason know. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. happy to join yeah, anytime. Yeah, thank you. We love having you on. I love doing it. Good. Have a good All one. Right. Have a great week.
Take care. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Professor Laura trying to cut me down to size, I think. 88, 88. Ask Leo Andrew on the line from Moore Park, California. Hello, Andrew. Good morning. And 110 cornets right behind. <laughs> 76 trombones. <laughs> no, that's one of my favorite movies because the colors are so fabulous. It's oh, incredible. it's beautiful. You're talking about, of course, Music Man. Uh, Wiz, and I'm, oh, I can see his face, but I can't remember his name. Uh, I used to have his name until you said that. Oh, uh, isn't that funny? It's age, isn't it? Everybody in the <laughs> listening is going, yeah. you know who it is. It's, um, yeah. oh, he was so good. What can I do for you? Uh, I have two things because you tell the world stuff that I'd like you to share, but I have a question about my Logitech MX Keys and MX uh, uh, Master 3 mouse. Yes. I can't get them working on the Mac. Oh, they work on my Mac, I think. Actually, I haven't tried it uh, on the newer Macs. Work. Yeah. But the things you can share with the world, a couple of years ago, um, Apple started by putting gray text on a white background. It is so oh, hard to so read. annoying. We got we got to tell people to stop that. And the other thing is, music on hold is so darn. <laughs> Why, <laughs> Andrew? Next, you're going to be saying, "Get off my lawn, you kids!" <laughs> Isn't it funny how, as we Maybe get a, a little bit older. Uh, we start saying the things our parents and grandparents used to say. You get a job and a haircut? Yeah. And the print is so small in restaurant menus these days, and it's so dark. That's why I carry a flashlight. <laughs> it is really true that, unfortunately, web design is often done by 20-somethings. And yep. they can read much finer type, and they can see much lower mm. contrast text. I actually blame a magazine called Wired. Which around, oh, yeah. when it came out in the year, uh, I think it was 2000, kind of sh made itself hip by printing articles on, like, electric purple text on black backgrounds. Stuff your eyes would hurt. And this, I mean, this was 20 years ago. Your eyes would, and it became hip somehow that it was somehow uh, old-fashioned to put black text on a white background. Well, that's crazy. Who would do that? Only old people. So I think it's young people. It is a definite uh, fact that web design is that way. If it really irks you, there are some things you can do. For instance, almost all browsers, and I do this routinely, you can press, you're, you said you're on a Mac, so you press Command Plus or Command Minus to change the size of the font. Uh, it might be command shift minus on windows is control shift plus and minus and, and the browser in most cases will remember what you said, uh, per page, not, uh, per session, but per page. So when you go back to that page, it'll know, oh, that's the, you know, Andrew likes to read that at 120%. If the contrast is bothering you, there is a more difficult but doable solution. All browsers allow you to specify uh, a format that you apply to web pages. You know, normally we we let the web page designer um, decide what color the page is, what color the text is, the size, and all of that stuff. But with custom, and sometimes it's called custom CSS, you'll have to look through your browser's settings. CSS uh, is short for cascading style sheets, which is not very useful, but it's a style sheet, basically. And you can have a custom style sheet that says it overrides what the web designer's chosen for font colors and background colors. So you can certainly do that, although that takes a little bit more effort. Um, I think more and more uh, we're going to see an awareness of this because the population is aging, frankly. And people like you and me, Andrew, are... <laughs> <laughs> we baby boomers are the first uh, first to arrive at this. But I agree with you. A lot of It's not just the web. A lot of apps are unusable for a variety of reasons. And it's worse in apps because you generally can't make the font bigger. Most phones will allow you to make fonts bigger. And then Between the music on hold, I can't help you with. I don't <laughs> we got to tell people. <laughs> Turn it down. So here's my question for today. I've got a Mac. Okay. It's running 10.116. It's an older Mac. It's a 2007. Yeah. And uh, I've got the Logitech MX keys. I use those. I love that. Keyboard. I love that. Um, and the... Uh, 
And it just and the mouse that goes with it, the and, Master Three. And it, and you're using the little dongle, the little USB dongle that you plug into the computer for the wireless operation. In this case, yes, because that Mac won't handle a Bluetooth. Right. And I, and it won't let me upgrade past ten eleven. I you know Logitech makes these MX mice and keyboards for Macintosh specifically, but I'm gonna guess that it, you could get a Mac driver that would support it. So I've been I've been looking around. I've even looked on oldversion.com. Can't seem to find. They anything. don't have anything. I've spoken to the customer no service department and not getting anywhere. Yeah, Logitech's not notorious for great customer service. Um. That's a really interesting question. They say they work with Apple, uh, Macs, and Chromebooks, and they should because the truth is mouse and keyboards are a standard. There's not, you know, I mean, I know they have their own drivers, but you don't, you, that might be one thing to do is remove the drivers and see and see how that works. Uh, it might just work with the generic uh, USB driver provided on the Macintosh. Are you using the, the, the custom Logitech drivers? That's what I'd like. I can get it to work as a standard keyboard and mouse, ah, but okay. I really want to have that back Got button it. on the mouse. Got it. So that's the thing. Yeah, the, it'll work as a standard because it is a standard, both mouse and keyboard, uh, but you don't get the additional features that Logitech offers. Um, Golly, right. I'm, I'm pretty convinced that you can do that. Um, I'm trying to remember. I, I use these. I love the uh, MX uh, mice and keyboards from Logitech. I think they're great, especially the Anywhere mouse. It's just a fantastic uh, mouse because it works on any surface. It's fast. It's a little more expensive, but it's, you know, it's, it's battery powered. I love the scroll wheel. And of course you want the back button. I don't blame you. It has additional buttons for, you know, navigating and stuff. I don't have a solution for you. They do have on the newer ones, uh, they are designed to work with Big Sur and so forth. You want it to work with the older stuff, and that's that may be where the issue lies. I don't know. Somebody might call right. in and, and let us know. I'm looking, uh, uh, you know, on the Logitech site, and it says works on Windows, Mac OS, iPad OS, Chrome OS, and Linux. So they they claim to work. Um, I would remove the um, I would remove the uh, driver. And download another one from uh, Logitech. Maybe it is because you're using an older Mac with an older operating system. Um, DOS Dude One. Okay. <laughs> here's a here's a little something from our uh, our chat room. Uh, it's a suggestion. We'll put this in the show notes. A suggestion for either an older driver or a third party driver. This is the other thing. Is so many people love the Logitech stuff. Um, oh, yeah, Mac OS 10.15 or later, says Scooter X. Okay, so that may be the issue. There is a patch, however, from DOS Dude 1. Can you, uh, let's see, it's... <laughs> now, normally I would say, whatever you do, <laughs> stay away from downloads from sites like DOS Dude 1. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust our chat room because they're pretty good. They say he's awesome. D o s d u d e one dot com slash Catalina. Now that lets you run Catalina on unsupported Macs. Okay, so that'll let you run a more modern version of Catalina. Actually, I am familiar with this. Um, uh, so that might be one solution is to get your uh, Mac OS to a more modern version, even on an older Mac, and that that you can do apparently with DOS Dude One. Uh, I haven't tried this, so use with caution. And uh, and can I also uh, back you up on this? Can you turn down your music on hold? <laughs> it's too dang loud, you kids. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater. Digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches, keyboards and mouses that won't work. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number 888-827-5536. That's toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. Uh, or Canada. Toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Uh, if you're outside that area, you can still, you can still call. Just use Skype and uh, should be free. 888-827-5536. Kevin's on the line from Asheville, North Carolina. Hi, Kevin. 
Hi, Leo. Good to speak with you. Well, it's good to talk to you. What can I do for you? So I have one of the Legacy Grace Media Streamers you mentioned last week on your show. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and I know that there's a different version of the firmware for that called SkyTune. Yeah. Would I be able to manually go in and replace receiver with SkyTune, or am I just stuck with having a five new system? So let, let me recap from uh, last week. Uh, there are a number of uh, internet radio companies that make radios uh, that allow you to listen to pretty much any station that's online through the radio. But the way they do it is they use a service called Receiva. Uh, it's a it's a directory service, Receiva Internet Radio at R-E-C-I-V-A dot com. And the Grace does it. Uh, we were talking about the C Crane. Um, there are other companies that do it. I think they're all very similar technologies. And the concern is after April 30th, Receiva's going away. And uh, if you go to the Receiva site, it says, please refer to your radio manufacturer because <laughs> many of these radios uh, won't work anymore. They'll continue to work with the presets because those URLs that are preset uh, uh, work until they change. And this is why you need a directory service is apparently these... these and these, that's where I'm at currently. Yeah. I can't do any new... I can't pull any new stations. My presets work great. I'm just concerned about presets working after that point. Yeah. No, they'll continue to work until the radio station moves. Uh, although I would imagine right. most broadcasters will now be cognizant of this and will say, hmm, we better not... We better not move. But it does happen. So there's two reasons you want a directory. One is so you can browse, Right. So you can find a station. You know, you could say, I want to find a Ukrainian station that broadcasts in Hungarian. And you can search through Receiva and find it and add it to your radio. So that's going away. But anything you've, between now and April 30th, add to your presets uh, or your memory should work until such time as that company, um, you know, that station moves. And then it'll suddenly, go in effect, go off the air. Now, I got an email from uh, Bob Crane. Uh, and they're they're working on a solution uh, for this for the C Crane radios, but this is the first time I've heard about this third party firmware. What's the name of it? SkyTune. SkyTune. Uh, and the idea is you yeah, could. I'm hoping my hope is that I could, you know, pull up some third party firmware that's got a USB port in the back. Oh, I I'm see. Sure all I could do with that. Oh, I see. I so SkyTune is an alternative uh, receiver. It's a different. It's a different receiver. And what you want to do is you want to tell your radio, which currently points to receiver, to point to SkyTune. Yeah, I think you're going to have to. Grace is going to have to offer that. I don't think there's a, an easy way. For, well, depends on your your skill level. But writing your own firmware for uh, somebody else's hardware is a non-trivial thing to do. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I would keep your eye peeled. I, you know, I, uh, I got a, an email from uh, Bob. Uh, let me read this. That's not doesn't apply specifically to your grace, but it gives some you some idea of what's going on. He says, uh, you know, um, thanks for your listeners. Uh, thanks to you and your listeners for discussion on Receiva and for plugging C. Crane. I confess, I listen to your show when I take my nap. Okay, thanks, Bob. <laughs> radio is not dead. Internet radio is not dead. It surprises me uh, about the selection and quality with no monthly fee. They're going to do a new radio, um, which will be interesting because uh, presumably uh, the new radio's solution is to move to SkyTune. In fact, he says, yes, advanced users can input their own valid URLs or... And so that's always a solution. If you can find the URL, maybe go to SkyTune and get it manually, you may have a way to manually enter it. But he says they're going to start, C. Crane's going to start using SkyTune.net. Now, he says, okay. he says the only negative is if SkyTune goes down. <laughs> uh, he says SkyTune yeah. is still the wild west of radio. So, and that's where I want to be. So uh, I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna uh, stay in touch with Bob because he's paying attention to this. He's got a business. Grace is, a, I believe, a Chinese company. Um, I would hope that Grace would be as graceful as C. Crane. C. Crane is offering people discounts. If you have an older model, a C. Crane Wi-Fi radio, if it's still under warranty, it's a free upgrade. So he's going to solve this for his customers. I would hope Grace would do the same thing. Putting your own firmware on there is unlikely to uh, work unless you're very skilled at writing firmware. Um, I'm not, and uh, and I think there are very. It's hard because 
you know, you, you, if you were doing a raspberry pie, see, here's the thing. I mean, honestly, all, all this radio is, is, is a small, inexpensive computing device, not a Raspberry Pi. Those are too expensive, but a Marvell chip or an Arduino or some kind of chip with some software. And, uh, and it's packaged in a nice box. It looks like a, a, ra a console radio you put on your desk. You could easily do the yeah. same thing with any, any computer. Get a $35 Raspberry Pi, and you could run radio software on it, Skytune, in fact, and get very much the same thing. You could have better speakers. You'd have more control over it. You just have to do it yourself. That would be far easier than writing firmware to keep the Grace radio working. So what I would do is write to Grace. Yeah. Yeah. So what I would do is write to Grace, say, what is what are you, you going to do about this? Receive is going down in two months. What are you going to do about it? If they don't do anything about it, um, I would roll your own or go to, oh, go to Bob and say, I want to see Crane Radio. Um, nowadays, I, I think the reason companies like Receiva are kind of fading away, Receiva's been around for 15 years, but they're fading away now is because a lot people aren't really doing this on a standalone yeah. device. They've got phones and they've got computers and they just do it on their phone or their computer. You know, you could put software on your computer that will, uh, or your smartphone that will let you listen to any radio show, including ours. So... I think that this is probably an end of an era to some degree, these standalone internet radios. Bob doesn't think so. That's why he's continuing to make them. He's, he's a believer. So, right. so I would suggest if, if you, you know, contact Grace, if they don't solve this, which they may not, um, then you can make your own or just use your smartphone. Yeah, I might just go with that as an option. I think that's what, you know, for instance, um, nowadays you go out and you buy a, uh, an inexpensive Echo Dot from Amazon, or a, I bought a $100 uh, um, uh, Apple HomePod Mini. Um, Google also sells these 100 buck devices using Google Assistant. You can say out loud, <laughs> play, uh, you know, KFI, the tech guy show, and it'll play it. You know, it'll find the live stream. That's really how it's happening now. You can hook those up to better speakers if you want, to your stereo. But, you know, for $100, a lot of these have very good speakers, certainly as good as the as the Grace Radio speakers. I think this is kind of the way of the future. I, I just don't think these standalone Internet radios are going to be much of a product going forward. I'm sorry, Bob. Bob loves... Bob is great because he lo and he's probably asleep now because it's afternoon. But... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say this in his sleep. Bob, thank you for making great radios. C Crane, C C R A N E dot com. And, uh, and uh, he's, you know, he's a believer in radio. And so for people who like that radio form factor, that's a great thing. But, but honestly, Bob, you could just put a, an Amazon Echo in there. <laughs> you could talk to it. It might be a better solution. And if you really want, you know, a dial and all of that stuff. Here's a, a quote from uh, Grace. If you have a legacy internet radio, you do. To help with the transition, Grace Digital will offer special one-time discounts to affected customers. It's kind of what Bob's doing. If you're interested in taking advantage of this offer, and this is from the website, press the following button. <laughs> so go, go, Grace understands this is an issue as well. So I would go to Grace and, uh, and, uh, and see what they can offer, a discount on a new radio. Or go out and get a $35 Raspberry Pi. Um, I think that's a perfectly good solution. I don't know. My, you know, I'm a geek. Uh, so my solution is always, oh, just roll your own. But I understand people want a, a radio. They could put on their, you know, on their desk or their counter. And it looks like a radio. It's got a knob. It's got a dial. It's got a clock on it. It's a clock radio, but it's an internet clock radio. I gave one to my mom. I love the idea. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well-dressed man. <laughs> 8888 Ask Leo is the phone number. Uh, Chris Marquardt, our photo guy, coming up. We're going to do a review of the assignment. I hope you took a weird picture because he's going to take a look at some weird pictures with us in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, Doug on the line from um, Panorama City, California. Hello, Doug. Hi, Leo. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for hanging on. Great. Um, I don't even know where to start. I, <laughs> I, I, only, I feel like a Cro Magnum. I had a club. Now I have a flip phone. But that's it. Um, I don't have a computer. Don't have any of these newer phones. I'm an artist. 
I'm also a handicap. I'm in a wheelchair, and now I'm in bed for the last year. Oh, I'm sorry. That's I really, well, I really want to figure out how to connect really simply with um, uh, being able to watch TV. I hate it when I guess it was the FCC stopped TV and it went to digital, and I live in Panorama City, and the problem is, is that I, I went and bought a bunch of TVs, but they don't they don't work, and um, because of the antenna or whatever. And yeah, they've all gone digital yeah. now. And the future of TV really is over the internet. Do you have internet access? Um, Probably not if you don't have a computer. No. Well, I, the building's supposed to be set up with Spectrum. Oh, good. And and um, do you pay for it, or uh, is it is it part of the rent? I, I I don't even know. Probably yeah. part of the rent. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, so there's a there's a spectrum cable uh, drop in your house, so that you could, if you wanted to, you could use that. That's pretty good at uh, high speed internet. Generally speaking, that's how you know most people consume content these days. You're going to need internet of some kind if you don't want to use right. an antenna. Um, what happens? And this was some years ago that the channels went from the analog frequencies they were on, which were very, it was prime real estate that everybody, including the cell phone companies, wanted. So the FCC moved these channels to higher frequencies and digital, uh, but that meant you needed a new tuner, uh, not only a, a different frequency, but even a tuner that could decode the digital signal instead of the old analog signal was getting. Any modern TV will, of course, do that. Uh, but the TVs yeah. you bought were obviously a uh, pre-digital transition, and they're not going right. to work. Yeah, you can get, in fact, you might even be able to get it for free. That For a long time, the government, state and federal government were offering free and inexpensive uh, digital converter boxes. Uh -huh. So you might check and see if you can get one of those. Because you're disabled, you might be able to get that for free. That would make sure. those TVs work uh, as long as you had an antenna. Um, I would, I think... Uh, I would certainly look at, here's one thing you could do, um, and it really is going to depend on your budget. But if you got an iPad, uh, you can get iPads that have uh, the capability of getting cellular data, LTE, mm -hmm. uh, which where you are would be fast enough to watch uh, streaming video of all kinds. Now, that's going to cost you not only for the iPad five, six hundred bucks, but then you're going to have a monthly fee for cellular data but it would allow you without adding any other hardware it would allow you to watch tv in bed and, and so forth um I, do you make a lot of phone calls uh not really yeah that's what most of most of the time these days these phones that we we all carry around for a lot of us aren't phones anymore i i don't want to make phone calls i make very few phone calls and if i do half you know half the time at least they're video calls, they're, which isn't phone calls at all. It's data uh, okay. using, uh, you know, du Google's Duo or Apple's FaceTime. Those are, frankly, for me, uh, much nicer. I would imagine for you, too, a great way to stay in touch with family right. and friends. So you don't really need a phone so much. You need a computer with Internet access. So one way to go would be a tablet with Internet access. I see. Um, I really feel pressured by these corporations. Um, the little guy, we're just being crushed. Absolutely. To kind of go on to, you know, electronic banking that's probably coming and and the places I just don't want to go. And, yeah. And I've avoided the Internet just because it, it just seems to have more problems than, than it has value it's a you know i'll be honest you know you're talking to a geek obviously doug so I, you're going to presume i have a bias in favor of, of tech uh, and maybe i do but i think it's a i recognize what you're saying and it is a mixed bag there's certainly these giant corporations like google facebook microsoft mm -hmm. apple who very much pretend to act in your interest and are very much acting in their own interest. So that's right. absolutely the case. And I, your sense of that is, I, is absolutely accurate. But I have to point out, on the other hand, especially for somebody who's bedridden, 
there are huge benefits to the connectivity that the internet offers you, the technology sure. the internet offers you. Huge benefits. So, uh, yeah. I, I think the trick is, and I think this is something we're all starting to think about, is balancing our needs as individuals with the demands of these big corporations and trying to find right. a way that is respectful of us as humans. Sure. And I think that there are ways to go. You know, I prefer, for instance, open source software to proprietary software for that very reason. Uh, you might want, not want to get an iPad because you might not want to support Apple. Unfortunately, these kind of high-tech physical objects generally are only available from large companies. I've, you know, I have and I've tried... Uh, this is a, f I'm holding right now, you can't see it, a phone that's called the Pine phone that's designed around open source. It's an open source hardware and stuff. It's not very good, not compared to an iPhone. So I think we're going to have to do a deal with the devil to some degree with these sure. big companies. But 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 do it, uh, I think you, you're, your eyes are in the right place with an eye towards autonomy and respect for individuals. Do, yeah, do, do you... Are there people who could come and like absolutely and evaluate my situation? Absolutely. So in in many communities, there are places like independent living resource centers, things like that. I'm not familiar with what's available in Panorama City, sure. Um, but I think if you call around, you should be able to find that. And they are uh, absolutely they're called accessibility or adaptability experts who will do that and help you. Uh, yeah. Hold on just a sec. Yeah, you don't want to navigate this all alone. There are people who have expertise in this area. So um, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm not sure just because, you know, this is, I'm, I'm up here in Northern California and I'm not really familiar with what's available to you in your area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sure look. there is. Um, uh, are, you new, are you newly, uh, are you newly um, disabled or is this something that's been around for a while? No. Uh, uh, yesterday was my anniversary of 55 years. In oh, a wow. Oh, wow. In my accident. I'm so, so you don't, but you haven't found somebody to, to, to advocate for you? Oh, I've lived by myself since I was 17. Good <laughs> for you. An artist. Yeah. And, um, and really well known and uh, um, as an artist on a kind of um, a street level. And um, I have, I, I, I inspired this guy from Norway to, who has a tech company. They're kind of like the Apple guys when they started in the garage. And they've developed a new concept for art that becomes interactive. And they're they're going to have an international show with my art. Coming. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, and But I need access to to being able to communicate with them more directly. But as an artist, I just kind of want to stay away from the business side and have yeah. to do all that. Yeah, yeah. You know? You're a hippie, like me. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, and this is, yeah, I, I, com I completely understand your point of view. Um, you know, this is, sounds funny, but uh, I saw Ralph Rex, the internet, and uh, then I understood the internet. <laughs> Good. Gatekeepers. Good. They're gatekeepers. And the gatekeepers are. are algorithms. And yes. the algorithms. That's accurate. Who, who direct you to the other sites where another algorithm rhythm will direct all their people to your site. And it could be some dumb little video instead of something important and but aware, you know what you're you're already aware of that and that is a huge step the real issue is people who just are unconscious of that and just follow along yeah. but by being aware of that i think artist. it's really yeah you're an artist that's what artists do right so what's really important is that i do think technology could be a huge advantage to you uh oh, to, me too but i only get it when it's practical and then when I got the flip phone, I got rid of the um, wall phone. Right. Because... Um, yeah, you're slowly moving in, in that direction. Yeah. Uh, I think you would really appreciate a tablet-style device. Um, if yeah, you can afford an iPad, I would absolutely look at an iPad. As corporate okay. as it is. Yeah. Sure. And, you, and you're going to want internet access. So either either hook up that Spectrum, which is probably the cheapest right. solution... Uh, you'll have, they'll come in, they'll put in Wi-Fi for you. So then an iPad will work wirelessly or get one. It's a, a little more expensive, but you can get one with a, a SIM chip in it. And then you'll use the phone company 
for sure. for data. That is, it's a little more pricey. Um, so it's really whatever uh, it makes sense to you. Uh, I think the spectrum would probably be the way to go. Hey, hey, Leo, where do you think the world's going with all this technology and all the corruption? And that's a good question. The, uh, cheating. And <laughs> I don't know. The, you know. And as I get older, as we get older, billion dollars. It seems worse. From, yeah, it seems worse all the time. Employment office. And, I know. And it's depressing. Thousand corporations hacked. I mean, and but that's like nothing next to what's really happened. How can the world sustain itself with all this corruption, especially because of the internet? That's a good question. I am. Uh, I have to run because I have to do the the camera guy. But uh, I would, boy, in thirty seconds, can I answer that question? Let's see. Um, <laughs> I would say. It seems glib to say this, but it's always been that way. And uh, I think as we get older, we kind of start to despair. But I think th the good news is young people, ignorant though they may be, <laughs> are very hopeful and uh, trying very hard to make the world a better place. So I'm hopeful too. The Tech Guy Podcast brought to you this week and many weeks by ExpressVPN. In fact, if you're smart enough to be using it right now, well... Notice how the video works, the audio works. ExpressVPN is the best VPN because it doesn't get in the way of doing what you want to do. It's the fastest, easiest to use. It's also the most secure. Why use ExpressVPN? Well, there are lots of reasons. Of course, we've always talked about security. All your data is scrambled as it leaves your computer. That's great if you're anywhere where people might be snooping on what you're doing. But there's another good reason, privacy. Every time you go online... Your internet service provider, AT&T, Comcast, Cox, whoever it is, is allowed. It's completely legal to store logs of every website you ever visit. And they can legally sell it to anyone. Typically, marketers want that information so they can track you. Yeah, your ISP tracks you. Well, not if you're using ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers. Your internet service provider has no idea what you're doing, where you're going, what you're searching for. Even Google doesn't because they don't see you. They see the ExpressVPN server. This is a really great way to protect your privacy. But I should point out, you want to make sure you trust the VPN provider, and that's why I use ExpressVPN. You don't want them logging what you're doing either. ExpressVPN doesn't. In fact, they care so much about this. They created trusted server technology, the only VPN uh, that uses this. When you press that big button to turn on ExpressVPN, and by the way, it's everywhere. Mac, Windows, iOS, Android. You can run it on many routers even. When you hit the big button, when you turn on ExpressVPN, a, whatever server you're going to, and by the way, you can choose from almost 90 countries all over the world, or just use the one that's closest to you. ExpressVPN will do that automatically. When you press that button, uh, the trusted server spins up on the ExpressVPN servers, that's yours and yours alone. No one else is using it. It's sitting in memory. It's in RAM. And it's it's sandboxed. It cannot write to disk. There's no way it can log what you're doing. And then when you disconnect, it's gone. And no trace of your visit remains. They don't, not only do they not log, they text extra steps to make sure they couldn't log if they wanted to. And I, and I don't, you don't have to trust me or ExpressVPN. They have regular third-party independent audits that say PricewaterhouseCoopers said, Privacy policy is exactly as stated. Trusted server works exactly as I just described. Your privacy is secure. They were the first major VPN provider to make sure all their VPN servers run in RAM, which also, by the way, has a benefit of making it faster. One of the things I love about ExpressVPN is it's so fast, you can watch HD video. You, could, you, know, you can use it to watch Netflix in Great Britain or, or Japan. No wonder CNET and Wired named ExpressVPN the number one VPN in the world. It's the only one I use. It's the one I recommend. Stop letting people keep logs of what you do online. Use the VPN technology that protects your privacy. ExpressVPN.com slash tech guy. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S. -S. They spell it out. That's another reason to like them. None of that shortened no more vowels thing. They have all the vowels. ExpressVPN.com slash tech tech guy if you go right now you can get three months free with a one-year plan that's the best deal it brings it down to below seven bucks a month it is a great deal 
for literally the best VPN there is. ExpressVPN.com slash Tech Guy. We thank them for supporting the show. We thank you for supporting us by going to that site. ExpressVPN.com slash Tech Guy. Now back to the show. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. And I hear the music, the Kodachrome music. That means Chris Marquardt's here, our photo guy, my Photo Sensei, he's at sensei.photo, no coincidence, S E N S E I dot photo. And he joins us every week. Not here last week because of DSL issues. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Tech um, issues on the Tech Eye Show, yes. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. Um, but it is time to look at our weird pictures. Yes. Every, yes, we had an assignment, the weird assignment. Every month, Chris gives us. Assignment. It's not a competition. It's really just a, a, a prod, a stimulus to get out there and take pictures with whatever camera you've got to illustrate a word or a concept. In this case, weird was the word. Uh, and did you get some good images? I did get some good images. Uh, before we get into the images, uh, I just want to say one thing, and that is we, as you know, we do this by the alphabet. So we are W, and then the uh, next one is X, Y, and Z, Z and then we're done with the alphabet and the series is over. So as we have the, the Flickr group always uh, well involved in this, um, I want to put a call out. I have I started this discussion on the Flickr group for suggestions what the next series should be. So I'm oh, looking forward to okay. um, getting some input from the community. There. Not the next word, but once we get through the alphabet, and you're going to have enough After trouble the alphabet, yes. doing Q, <laughs> W, X, Y, and Z. But once we get through the alphabet, we're at W, we did Q. So Y and Z, I think you can probably do it by now. X might be a little tricky next time. Next time, um, yeah, What could well, we do we'll, afterwards? We'll figure that one out. What, what should the series be afterwards? I think this weird was good, by the way. We got some really oh, the, interesting uh, yeah, images. Yeah, we, we, we get a lot of interesting uh, inputs here, a lot of uh, great submissions. And uh, yes, I have chosen three, and let's take a look at them. The <laughs> I'm first looking one at their slideshow. So many weird ones. Yeah, it's yeah. like weird stuff. Yeah. Um, the first one is that big head of Rick, of uh, Rick and Morty. <laughs> and it, it's, it, okay, two things about this. First of all, yeah, that's totally weird. <laughs> why Why is that there? I have no idea. Um, second thing, I've photographically, I would have probably done it slightly different, though, because... Um, I mean, you have an indication that it's a big, Hey, Chris, head, do, me, do me a favor real quick. Uh, turn off your video because we're starting to lose you. I think your DSL is starting to fail. Um, I, I, all we really okay. need is the audio. I've got, I, I, and you know, it's a radio show, as I mentioned from time to time. But uh, if you turn off the video. Is this any better? Yeah, it sounds much better. We don't, we don't need the oh, birds. Okay, I love seeing you, but. You know the people can't. Yeah, no worries. Um, <laughs> so, so the big, the big head. I we can clearly see it's a big head because there is like a, a bit of a truss down there, a roof. Of yeah, a it's not a cartoon. Something. It's an actual physical head. I wish it would have been a bit more, um, a, a bit more visible that it is a big head, like more, more context around it. I think yeah. that's the tip I can give here. Just, just zoom a bit out and include a bit more of the surroundings to make it even more obvious on first, uh, on the first look. But yep, good find, absolutely great find. And definitely um, weird. Second thing, absolutely. Second one by R. Fraser is. <laughs> I have no idea where this is, but it's a cow on a rooftop. Sure. I mean, if that's not weird, it happens all the time. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, th there's another reason I like this picture, and I chose it, and it's just the way it. Okay, so that cow is well lit behind a, uh, in front of a darker background, so you have this um, a good contrast. So it's easy to see. Then there's the sun is coming from the right. There's this weird shadow of a sign, which is like composed into the middle of that piece of the wall there. It kind of looks like it's it's made to be there. And the whole thing, yeah, just has this vibe of being a weird corner on a weird street. You know, it's funny because there is a shadow from a completely unrelated, it looks like a road sign uh, on the building. Yes. And I, as a photographer, I might have said, oh, I got to move around. I don't want that shadow. And yet, I think without the shadow, it's not as good a picture for some reason. It kind of belongs there. For some reason that I can't really explain, it feels like it belongs there. Yeah, it's geometrically supporting the cow <laughs> yes. or something. I don't know what it is. Isn't that funny? Sometimes a, a thing that you would say, oh, I don't want any wires in my picture, can sometimes 
make a difference, make it work. So, nice. all right. And last Whoa. but not least, uh, picture by it's uh, R. Frazier again. We we have this thing you can submit one a week, so it's possible that uh, the same person gets uh, two pictures in there. I didn't even look at the names when I chose that one, and it's a Volkswagen Beetle without wheels, but instead it has big spider legs and it has uh, black dots on it and it's red, so it's like a ladybug kind of thing, um, standing in a field somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wine, It's a vineyard. I see uh, grapes behind him, yep. so it's yep. probably near here. It looks very much like uh, somewhere around our area. That's yeah, hysterical. Possibly, and, and uh, again, one, one little thing photographically that I would have changed is I would have probably stepped a bit to the left so that the, that mast in the background doesn't like collide. There's with the, it. With when the I legs. said wires, there's the wire. Right, <laughs> it's the telephone yeah. wa telephone line, <laughs> and uh, sometimes you don't want them. Sometimes they don't work. That is a crazy, crazy shot. I love that. So that's the weird photo. We've used up weird. We're only three letters left: X, Y, and Z. X. Yes. X is next, and uh, again, this comes from the community uh, from Demi Lente, and I like this because it's so simple. X. Uh, I was looking for words with X, and but but this one made most sense to me, and that is X, where the two lines cross to form the letter X. Oh, so um, oh, yeah, I like it. But as simple as that, X shaped things. X so that's shaped, shaped things. Task. X shaped things. That's now you have four weeks. You can submit a photo a week. The way this works, you go to Flickr.com, which is a very nice photo sharing site. Chris and I are big advocates, fans of uh, Flickr, and uh, there is a group. It's free to join, by the way. There's a group there called the Tech Guy Group, and you'll know you're in the right place because there's a lot of people. It's, I don't know, thirteen thousand members or something. Uh, Renee Silverman's our moderator. Join that group. When you get an image that has two lines crossing to form an X that, that speaks to you, tag it with TGX, I guess, right? TGX. Now, we, 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 we do it a bit differently this time because the TGX tag is already taken. It's already used. On, oh, uh, Yeah, it's already used. We do, we do a TGX cross. TGX, C-R-O-S-S, -S, TGX cross. Yes. Okay. Tag it. Uh, that's what you do on Flickr. That's that's part. That's actually Flickr kind of invented that kind of folksonomy they call it. Uh, so tag it T J X cross. Uh, submit it to the Tech Guy group. Renee Silverman, our moderator, will thank you and say thank you. I got your submission. Uh, and then in about a week, uh, or rather a month, Chris will review and pick three, just as we did today, to talk about. While you're there, join the conversation. What should the next series be? We did A through Z. What's next? What's the next? And did you, do you, is there an issue with how long it is, Chris? Is it, is, is it, I mean. What, what do you mean with how long it is? Well, I mean, how, uh, uh, I don't know what else it could be. It could be, uh, I don't know. Well, I'm, I'll have to go in the discussion well, and find out. I think that's, that's where we'll find out. <laughs> okay. How, what is, what is for our next Photo assignments after we finish through uh, A through Z. I mean, the alphabet was very, very flexible. That was easy. Right? Yeah, it was a good this one. Was a, this was fairly easy. So I'm looking for everyone to wreck their brains over this and come up with something really smart. Maybe we'll find something. <laughs> it's called crowdsourcing, and, and Chris is a, yes. very, is a master at it. You'll find Chris Marquardt at uh, his website, which is sensei, S-E-N-E-I dot photo. Lots of stuff there. He does photo coaching. He and his partners uh, can help you become a better photographer. Uh, you know, I think we're getting close to the end of quarantine. Do you have a, a, an ETA for getting back on the road with your photo workshops? Well, we're yeah. Um, Sometime, no, not really. <laughs> I hope mid. I hope mid year, but um, it would be nice. We'll, Maybe we'll next see year. For that. Maybe we'll next year. That. We'll see. Yeah. Thank you, Chris, my photo sensei, Chris Marquardt. Don't forget sensei.photo. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. More calls right after this. Yeah, I think your uh, your DSL isn't fully recovered. You were. Fine. I'm not sure. I mean. I was I was in uh, in um, uh, I talked to Scott who who relayed to me that you're still having issues with a few other guests so it's interesting because I do a lot of these things with Obis Ninja and Twitch is the only place where these kinds of things happen to me so I'm really curious 
what this is. And I think we should do a bit of a deeper troubleshooting session with yeah. uh, together with with uh, Steve. Could be Steve our Seguin. It could be our audio uh, chain I for know. sure. An interaction. Somehow. What what happened exactly? Can you describe what it sounded like? Yeah, just norm, just like it would with Skype. It just started to break up. Uh, your picture froze, and the audio started to break up. Packet loss. Okay. Packet loss. Okay, yeah. Uh, which is which is the big adversary for um, for WebRTC. Right. Packet loss and CPU encoding CPU, but that's not an issue here. So it has been it's packet puzzling loss. Where because the heck honestly, does this come from? We are not getting good results with OBS Ninja. It's just not consistent, and there's also I, still I can audio see that. issues. Yeah. I can yeah. totally see that, yeah. which again is weird, very, very weird, because I'm not seeing these in any of my other like five or six productions that yeah, I do. Yeah, I know. I know. And so, so it's obviously something we're doing weird or wrong. So I don't know. Maybe, yeah. So so I, I would suggest to do a kind of a debugging session with with John and and Steve to fight to find out where this happens in the in the chain. I'm going to be honest with you. We're not highly motivated to do that. Skype works fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um I, I would love it if OBS Ninja would work uh and I you know to the mm -hmm. degree that John and uh, you know we're kind of you know we, we we laid off a lot of people. We're kind of down to a I skeleton can team. I understand that. Yes. So, um since we have something that generally works, I mm -hmm. don't think there's an urgent impetus to do this. But, but John, it's up to you and, and the amount of time you want to spend on this. I really appreciate, Chris, you're, you're helping. Yeah, it's, I, I, totally, I, I totally hear where you're coming from. I can yeah. totally see that. So Yeah, we can't, we can't quite yeah. figure it out. It's just bizarre. Yeah. So, yes, and I'm sure Steve would like to figure it out. I mean, you know, that's going to be something he wants to solve he just doesn't see this with anybody else I mean, there's 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 big companies using it i think nasa's using it i mean this it's really interesting it it's some some weird side side thing some weird side effect that's going on that is hard to pinpoint yeah so i don't know but yeah oh I've, if, if you need something that works i totally get that i'm 100 percent get that yeah so and i just have a limited amount of engineering. I, I wouldn't blame you going back to skype i totally yeah. wouldn't well we we that. do most of the time we use skype um yeah. reminder daylight saving time yes i'm aware of that okay <laughs> next week i'll next. be here next week okay. at the proper time <laughs> the all right saying, don't let chris forget it's daylight saving time <laughs> yeah, they they already told me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, have a good one. Take okay. care. Yep. Bye bye. See you next week. Bye now. No, it's not. It's it's not related to the new TriCaster. It's not because it happened before the new TriCaster. It's not related to this room versus another room. That doesn't make you know. That's not how it works. Um. It's a bandwidth issue, as far as I can tell. We have uh, 10 gigabits symmetric here, so I don't think it's our bandwidth issue. I don't. I just don't know. Just don't know. My guess is it's related to our audio chain somehow, but we that doesn't make sense either. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I think we're just more demanding. Leo Laporte. The tech guy, 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Jim's on the line from Morrison, Colorado. Hello, Jim. Hi, Leo. Great to talk to you. What's up? Yep. Well, I just wanted to share an experience that I had that was pretty interesting. Um, I was the uh, lead designer on the uh, Viking Surface Center. <gasps> uh, no kidding. Yes, that's the old, the first one that landed on Mars. In yeah, 1976. Holy moly! Were you at? Uh, was it NASA or is it JPL? It was NASA, right? I I worked for Martin Marietta at the time. Oh, okay. Oh, Martin Lockheed, uh, but then uh, NASA was our boss uh, on the uh, job. This was the first U.S. mission to land uh, anything on the surface of. Mars, and of course, a great success. Yes. Beautiful images. And now you must be thrilled to see here we are 
golly, 45 years later, uh, yeah, going back. Yes. So anyway, the uh, experience was that uh, uh, the surface sampler was uh, a device that just had communicated with the Viking computer, the onboard computer, and it received commands to uh, uh, extend the boom out to the soil and uh, take a sample of the soil. It wasn't like a rover, like these rovers. It was on. It wasn't on wheels. It was just a static no. thing. But you had the arm, and you went down. And you got samples, and I presume you had on board some uh, science packages that allowed you to analyze uh, those samples. We had two experiments. One was a biology and one was a GCMS, which was a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. Right. Yeah. Did you find uh, any biology? I think it was negative for yeah. life. Yeah. Yes. But it's but anyway, it's a it's hist a historic mission. I mean, really remarkable in 1976 to be able to do that. And Orbiter uh, functioned for several years after. It was only supposed to go for something like uh, a month or two, right? Yes. The uh, the landers uh, worked for years. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. That's really cool. So, must must have been fun. What's your training? Um, well, I'm an electrical engineer. I have a master's degree from uh, CU here in Denver. But what I wanted to get to is that the, uh, we tested the unit completely. It passed all the tests, you know, uh, temperature, high and low temperature, shock and vibration, and EMI, and it passed all those tests. And then we put it in the chamber to simulate the Martian atmosphere, and it failed uh, one test oh. on it. But it worked perfectly um, on Earth, but uh, not on Mars. Uh, so what we did is we populated the whole unit with thermocouples, and we found that um, one spot was getting too hot, uh, when it was in the Martian atmosphere. All that hot sun in the thin atmosphere gets pretty what, warm up there. What happened is that one of the power transistors uh, overheated. Oh. And it overheated because uh, they, uh, the uh, uh, you know, thermal com conductivity between the uh, transistor and the uh, heat sink was... Uh, degraded in the Martian atmosphere, we could not use the. Uh, oh, I see. The normal uh, grease, uh, temperature grease, because it was uh, it might have outgassed to it would the. Have uh, ablated into the atmosphere. Yeah. Well, and also uh, degraded the. It might degrade the cameras. Oh, that wouldn't be good, right? Yeah. I'm looking at some images from Viking. Some amazing images. Really beautiful. Our first really good pictures of Mars, I think. Well, the ones that are coming out now are really... Aren't they amazing? It's like they got a GoPro up there. <laughs> and it, it, Now, did you did the, the uh, lander land via parachute? I believe so. Yeah. They, they didn't have that fancy bouncing ball trick or the, or the uh, sky crane maneuver. Pretty incredible uh, what we have been able to do. It was reverse thrusters. Uh, also. Oh, interesting. So it had its own thrusters. Okay. Very interesting. Well, to, solve, to solve this problem, uh, what happened is that the torque on the uh, the hold down of the transistor uh, was not right. And uh, all it took is screwing the, uh, tightening the screws on oh, the... Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> on the, and it, it, then it flew through the test and isn't that funny? Yeah. When uh, engineering meets the real world, you never know. You right. never know. Hey, it, it's an honor and a privilege to talk to you, Jim. Yes. Thank, I, you, thank, you. thank you for your work. Hard work. It must be amazing to watch what's happening now. Uh, it, it is. What a future. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Nice to talk to you. I love it's great. This show attracts geeks of all stripes, doesn't it? <laughs> Including uh, classic space geeks from uh, from the days of Viking. Wow, how cool is that? 
Russell, Atkinson, New Hampshire. Hi, Russell. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, good afternoon, Leo. Afternoon. Uh, before I ask my question. Sure. Um, number one, I am not napping. <laughs> Bob Crane cracked me up. He said, yeah, I, I listen to you when I nap. I thought, well, that's, that's I don't know if that counts. <laughs> is, that, is, that the, is that the meaning of a left-handed compliment? Or just, uh... <laughs> no, that's Bob. I love him. He's a great guy and he's a fan of the show. And of course, I'm a fan of uh, his products and his company. So Maybe, maybe he was napping when he was calling. <laughs> uh, Good. Thank you for staying awake for the show. I appreciate it. I know my voice is a little soporific, so I appreciate that. Yeah, well, I, I actually ran two errands while I was on hold. Oh, I'm sorry about that, too. Yeah. No, that's okay. I, I was afraid that as I stepped up to the Amazon counter at Cole, I, you'd come on. I'd pick you up. Uh, yep. yep. I'd have to back off. Um, so secondly, thanks for taking my call. And thirdly, thank you for having the easiest phone number to remember when you're doing a call-in. It's a good one, isn't it? It's absolutely easy. Yeah, Google didn't recognize it. I had to type in the numbers, but <laughs> I at one point I think I have eighty eight eighty eight askleo dot com. I should probably hook that up. I don't know if I have yet. So uh, yeah, that's a good number. I like it. I I thank the folks at. Uh, at I think it was actually a Premier that got that number for me. Yeah, if you go to eighty eight eighty eight askleo, it should show the Tech Guy Labs uh, website. But it will. One of these days, Mr. Google will get smart enough to know that when somebody says 8888-ASK-LEO, that we know what those letters Smarten mean. Smarten up, Google. Wise up. Yeah, wake up. Wake up, Google. Uh, maybe uh, Bill Gates' company will, will recognize it sooner. <laughs> what, can I, what can I do for you? I only have a minute left, Russell. I was trying to use no machine because I discovered that uh, Windows 10 version of remote PC... Uh, cost a hundred bucks per computer, I think, or something like that. So I, I looked for shareware and found no machine. And I could, I'm, I'm trying to set my father up. He's elderly. He lives alone, 98. And he's got uh, three great grandkids and, and can't do Zoom or Skype because he, he's not tech savvy. Right. But if I can control his PC from my house and then give the same software and access codes to my sister and my oldest son, they're, they're on board. I could only get the two machines. I, I could control. The, re the remote PC, as long as it's on my home Wi-Fi, and I could do the same thing on his home Wi-Fi. Oh, hold on. i got to take a break. I think remote PC will do exactly what you want. Leo Laporte, T-Tech guy. So go to remotepc.com. It's 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 not 100 bucks. It's it's like, uh, it's nothing. <laughs> it's, what is it? It's yeah. $4 for two computers a year. With, with... With your 90% uh, off, yeah, you just got off a commercial break. That's almost nothing. Yeah, so that's the one I would use. Where, where did you come up with a hundred bucks? Well, I went onto the Windows website because oh, your oh Microsoft solution. Yeah, no, try Remote PC. Try Remote PC. There are free solutions. I don't. I haven't tried No Machine. Maybe not the first one I would try if you want a free solution. Um, yep. Uh, I mean, six. I think it's five ninety five a year or something like that. It's not expensive to do a remote PC. Well, your ad said six bucks a month, but then ninety percent off for the first first year. year. Right would only make it uh, like less than a buck. Yes, yeah, nothing. That's, yeah, that's noise. Yeah, I will go that route and give it a try. I think you'll find it's exactly what you want to do. I use it with my eighty eight year old mom, and it's a perfect solution. So all that she has to do is press the power button. Is that it? You, you'll need to get it installed. Yeah, I mean, I'll set both both machines up at my but house. But once it's installed, then you can uh, set it up. There's a variety of ways to set it up. So uh, you, I would get the consumer version because you only need two computers, right? That's $4 a year, at least for the first year. And then if you don't like it, you don't have to stick around for the thirty nine fifty a year. Yeah, well, if it works, I'll turn my my kid sister onto it. She'll yeah. she'd like to do it too. With yeah. My own well, then you get it for seven bucks a year. Then for this for yeah. the ten yeah. computers. And, yeah. So, it, there are a variety of ways to have it. You generally want to set it up so that he has to give you permission to use it. I think he'll probably want that too. So you have oh, to yeah. say, Dad, sit down at your computer, turn on your computer, and then he'll see a pop up saying. You know, uh, uh, Russell wants to access it. Is it okay? And he'll say yes. And then at that point, you have full access. Yeah, he he can do that much. He can press the power button, and he can wait. Yeah, 
the pop up. Yeah. Um, all right, I will learn how to use that. That sounds like a terrific solution with your endorsement. Even uh, even better. Now I'm going <laughs> to leave because I got to go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> a pleasure talking to you, Russell. I'm glad I could uh, relax you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay. All righty, sir. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Why, well, hey, hey, how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number, if you want to talk high tech with me. I'd love to talk high tech with you. 888-827-5536. Rod Pyle, our space guy, is coming up. More space talk in about uh, 25 minutes. But meanwhile, Richard's on the line from Woodland Hills, California. Hello, Richard. Hi, Leo. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for asking. Thanks for taking my call. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. So here's the situation. I uh, want to get a new laptop, and I want it to do specifically two things. One, I want to do product design. So computer-aided design, product design. And uh, the other thing is I want to do, like, uh, media, like uh, maybe do short films. Oh, fun. Animated and some splicing. So I just want to make sure I got the most power and uh, the widest range. So hopefully you can give me Yeah, some interesting. Do you, do you know which software you want to use for the uh, CAD? Uh, it'll be probably Photoshop as well as Blender. Okay. And uh, Alias. Okay. Uh, and for video editing, uh, do you care? I think there's Final Cut. Um, I'm sorry, what's that? Sounds like you're looking at a Mac. It, does it sound like I'm looking at a Mac? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, oh, this is, you know, this is, there's almost an infinite number of choices here. So oh, yeah. what, what you're asking, and you want a laptop, right? Yeah, I'm looking for yeah. a laptop. So generally speaking, laptops due to thermal uh, limitations, constraints, are not as fast and powerful as desktops. They really can't be. They shouldn't be because they're portable. They're small. They have a small case. They can't dissipate as much heat. So if you were saying, I want the most powerful machine out there, you know, you'd get a desktop for sure. Okay. Uh, and, and people who are doing high-end CAD uh, are doing it on desktops. However, you know, Alias, Photoshop, Blender, you can easily do on a laptop. A lot of people do. So it just, the only thing you'd give up really is speed and screen size. And the, the, the latter you can fix because you can get an external screen. So when you're at home, the sky's mm -hmm. the limit. Uh, the former you can't really take care of because there are these inherent limits. Even if you get a state-of-the-art i9 Intel processor in a laptop, it's going to be thermally constrained. It really won't get to run at full speed for long periods of time because it just gets too hot. So there are, you know, laptops with active cooling and so forth. I would say probably the fastest, if you want the top line fastest laptop computers, they are still Windows machines uh, mm -hmm. because PC makers are willing to put in, you know, high-end NVIDIA cards and and high-end processors. Generally, these things are beasts. They're heavy, they're big, terrible battery life, big fans. We had a caller yesterday who bought an Asus Republic of Gamers a laptop for gaming. She says, it burns my, the, the air coming out of the thing is so hot, my hand is burning. And I said, well, <laughs> doesn't mean it's, it's broken, it just means it's uh, working hard. So I guess the one of the reasons I like the new, especially the new stuff. Now, if, if you could wait, I would wait and see what Apple does in the next three months. Okay. Because Apple now is starting to make laptops based on this uh, Apple Silicon. They make their own chips. And mm -hmm. are, they're getting their performance per watt is extraordinary, which means they run cooler and they can run faster. The low ends that they've released, the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro 13-inch, and the Mac Mini, these are the lowest end computers that they make, already are almost as fast as the fastest Windows machines. So I anticipate next spring, maybe early summer, maybe as late as June, no later, they will announce newer, even faster machines for the pro market. You want a pro machine. You're doing high-end stuff. Mm -hmm. The good news is Final Cut's a Mac. Um, everything you just described will run on a Mac. 
And uh, even Adobe is, is going to make Photoshop not only run on the Mac, but run native on these new Apple chips. That's, that's kind of what you want, is, is apps that will run native, because they'll take the most advantage of it. So Photoshop is one of the first things Adobe ported to the M1 chips. And early reports are it's really beautifully done. It's very fast. It's working very well. So as time goes by, I think Apple, with its Macintosh platform is going to start to leapfrog what PC makers can do. PC makers are still tied to an Intel platform that is frankly showing its age. Apple's stuff is going to be faster at a lower power, lower heat. And in the long run, especially in a laptop, that's kind of what you care about. Can you wait a little bit? Um, it, I, I would prefer not to wait that long. If it was three months, it wouldn't be a problem. But now you made me start thinking about a, uh, a desk, uh, a desk. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you don't need the portability, absolutely would go with a desktop. And what would be, what would be, uh, I'd be looking at if I was looking at a desktop, Leo, I know you're kind of pressed for time. We use, we use, uh, for our editors and they're using Adobe Premiere, not Final Cut, uh, cause they're running on Windows. We use Dell Precision Workstations, and I think that they are very... Dell has... You want to look at a workstation for what you just described. Assuming price is no object, that speed is more important. Workstations are designed for professionals who can, uh, who can justify the expense because it's for their work. It's, it's, it's making them money. Uh, and so I would look at a workstation. Dell makes excellent workstations. Um, and, and you can configure that very high-end. You can get, you know, and you want a lot of RAM. You probably want as much as 64 gigs of RAM. You're never going to get that in a laptop. Well, not never, but no. it's hard to get that in a laptop. But more RAM, especially in Photoshop, uh, Blender makes a big difference. Uh, mm -hmm. Video editing. You're going to want a, a really fast uh, multi-core processor. Uh, and probably for these high-end workstations, that's probably a Xeon, the higher-end Intel workstation chips. Uh, they're more expensive, but they are capable of doing more. And here's something people have been talking about lately. Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, just did a tirade over this. And I have to say I agree with him. Low-end computers use traditional memory, RAM. Modern high-end computers, workstation computers, are using something called ECC RAM or error correcting RAM. It's more expensive. Manufacturers, for some reason, don't want to put it in low-end computers. But increasingly, as we push the envelope with what we can do with computing, the old-style non-error correcting RAM is, is the cause, I think, for more crashes, more problems with software than, than we really appreciate. Linus Torvald said, it's time we finally said every computer should be equipped with ECC RAM. In your price range, if the kind of machines you're getting, you absolutely should have ECC. Okay. So I would I would look at ECC RAM. I would look at a Xeon processor, as much memory as you can afford. And now, because of what you're doing, you also want a big screen with very high quality. You're spending, you know, a professional spend ten grand or more on a system like this. Is that out of your price range? Um, I'm thinking probably somewhere between five and eight. You're in the ballpark. You're good. Yeah. You're good. You may, you know, you may not be able to get a, a very, very, very fancy monitor. Um, you know, in a year, Apple will have high-end Mac Pros that, I, in my opinion, and of course it's just a guess on my part, will kick the butt of anything that Intel chips uh, can do. And those will be, and Apple makes very high-end screens, but their stuff is extremely pricey. But if you go into recording studios, if you go into video editing suites, you're going to see a preponderance of Apple uh, gear. And I think as, as time goes by, you're going to see more and more because of that. So, but yeah, ECC is something I've been meaning to talk about. This is a, there's, there's a bit of a drumbeat going on in the tech community. Um, to, to get ECC memory. I think for what you're describing, it's also very important. Gotcha. That, that makes sense. Yeah. It's a little slower. Um, so maybe for gaming, maybe not ideal, but, but honestly, for what you're doing, absolutely. You want stability. That's important. Gotcha. Yeah. Can I turn one more question? About sure. So ADM versus Intel. Okay. Well, yeah, you know, so AMD nowadays does have, you know what, I take it back, maybe not a Xeon, maybe get one of the new Ryzen's, 
get a thread ripper. You're absolutely right. AMD, for what you're describing, is starting to uh, to look pretty good. Um, the only issue on this is ECC. Um, you got to make sure you get a, a processor that'll support uh, ECC RAM. And I seem to remember some AMD processors uh, do not. So you want to look carefully on that. But yeah, actually, I have no hesitation in saying getting a high-end AMD processor. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Hey, you've been incredibly helpful. Thank you. Well, I gave you vague answers. <laughs> but it's, it's, no, no, it's, it's as specific as I can get because, you know, this is a very personal decision. But you're going to be very glad you spent the extra money. I'm glad you hear your budget is that high because if, yeah. if this is for professional work, that's vital. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm slowly getting my toe back into it. Good. So you've done it before, but you're getting back to work at it? Uh, well, with the with the CAD, uh, very, very lightly. Uh, and so I'm kind of getting back into it to, to, to totally be candid with you. What I was doing was I was doing a lot of uh, rendering by hand. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> but I found that I, there's a high-end designer named Scott Peterson and everybody oh, yeah. in the industry knows what Oh, yeah. He does. Absolutely. And he just basically just said, if you aren't doing this, then there's just no way that you can do anything professional. So that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. It's time. And you'll be glad you learned those skills. It's an investment in yourself. It's an investment in your future. Yes. Very true. Absolutely worth it. And you have time. Don't You don't have to worry about the Apple stuff. That's your next purchase. Not this time. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Hey, it's good to talk to you, Richard. I appreciate it. I love talking about the high end. Things are changing rapidly. Uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a good time to be a, a, a geek, I think. Yeah, one of the two. I still recommend and use I'd, uh, LastPass Web 6476. Um, they, you know, they decided not to sponsor uh, again uh, this year, the studio sponsorship. We're still in touch with them. The great people highly recommend them still. Um, they said maybe next year. The problem is they're kind of in flux right now, um, for you know, for a lot of reasons. So, um, but yeah, there, LastPass is a good choice. There were was a bit of a furor over LastPass changing its free tier to eliminate syncing to multiple devices. Um, I personally don't understand why somebody's not willing to pay for a password manager. It's so important. I think three bucks a month for a password manager is not unreasonable. But if you want a free one, there's a, a good, very powerful free password manager. It's quite capable. It maybe doesn't have all the bells and whistles of LastPass called Bitwarden. I don't have any hesitation recommending that. That's an excellent. I actually have accounts with LastPass, Bitwarden, 1Password, KeyPass. Um, I think, f uh, oh, I can't even remember all of them. I have many different password accounts because I'm always trying them. Um, but I, you know, I don't think, I, I think it's nuts to say, oh, what's, what's, what's a good free password manager? I mean, I just, I don't understand that. Now there, there was also some concern about uh, tracking, but you know, most software uses tracking. I, I, I don't think that's an issue. Um, tracking can mean different things doesn't mean necessarily uh, they're, they're stealing your <laughs> information. They're keeping track of how you use stuff. Every, almost every bit of software tracks how you use it so that they can figure out what the features are that people want and don't want and so forth. That's very common. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888. Ask Leo, let's go to Alpharetta, Georgia. Alex is on the line. Hello, Alex. Hey, Leo. Thanks for taking my call. Well, my uh, pleasure. I'm, I'm glad you called. Uh, I know that you are a fan of electric vehicles, and, and you have uh, Sam every now and then to talk about, you know, lately, that's all you guys talk about. <laughs> and, but I was, I was thinking about it, because I'm, I'm really interested in the next few years, just, you know, getting one because of, the, you know, helping the environment and all that. But I've been thinking, are electric uh, vehicles more... Uh, a lease type of investment in, instead of buying it because of the battery degradations and also uh, you know me thinking about it are are we looking at for example a Nissan Leaf that a 2017 Nissan Leaf 
um, the battery degradation can be up to 20% already. So are we are we t- uh, considering the, that we may be creating a little bit of electronic waste when we look at the, the Cer- Certainly, the, the, certainly the con- a cause for concern. There's no car you can drive that doesn't cause some environmental a hazard, but there have been many studies now on electric vehicles versus gas vehicles, and the net uh, is absolutely in favor of electric vehicles. Um, but you're right, there is an issue with lithium ion batteries. Um, we're getting better at recycling them. Uh, I think, you know, because this is such a new area, it's hard to know how long those batteries are going to be last. The Tesla, which is clearly the king of all of this technology. Uh, you know, for whatever you think about the fit and finish and the reliability of their vehicles, they are absolutely kings of efficiency and battery life. And we're now seeing Tesla vehicles entering their 10th year and the batteries are, are in great shape. So I don't think, you know, then there's a number of things they do to protect that. The Leaf may not have done that. Remember, the that 2017 Nissan Leaf was an early effort from Nissan, and in many respects wasn't a state-of-the-art electric vehicle. In fact, we're only now starting to see, I think, state-of-the-art electric vehicles that can come close to competing with Tesla. Uh, for a long time, companies made electric vehicles as what they called compliance cars to to live up to federal and state emissions regulations and so forth. But now I think they understand the market is heading towards electric and they are starting to really design electric vehicles from the ground up. And VW and Audi, even Ford and General Motors are coming up with new designs for electric vehicles that are fantastic, that protect the battery better. You need to cool it when you're doing supercharging because uh, heat is bad for a battery. Uh, Cold is also bad for a battery, so you really have to have it climate controlled. In almost every case, my experience both with Tesla, Chevy, uh, we have a Chevy Bolt, and now with my new Ford is you don't want to charge it 100% unless you absolutely need all that range because it'll improve the battery life considerably, if you, and Tesla says this too, to only charge to 80 or 90%. I think we're, we're seeing new technology. I think we're starting to solve this battery issue. But there is no doubt, you're going to see people who are advocates, strong advocates of, of gas vehicles. I'm not sure why they are, but you're going to see people say, oh, no, no, the environmental impact of electric vehicles is at least as bad as that of gas vehicles. That's absolutely not true. I'll put some links to, to articles uh, that'll that'll explain, I think, conclusively that that in balance, an electric vehicle is so much better for the environment. Not completely harmless. We haven't gotten to that point. Walking is more harmless. You know, there's still other issues with walking, but I, you know, if you're going to drive a vehicle, there's going to be some harm. But I think electric vehicles are great. And let me add to this, and this may even be more important, Alex. They're fun as heck to drive. I don't ever want to drive a gas vehicle again. I am so hooked on how an electric vehicle drives. Instantaneous torque. It leaps off the stop line. Uh, they, they are just a pleasure to drive. So that's something else to consider. Um, I, I agree, and, and, and I agree with almost everything you said. But at this point, do you think we are the, at the point that uh, we should be looking to lease the electric, uh, electric vehicles? Well, my wife makes me lease them because for that very reason. She, more it's about the technology is advancing so rapidly. But I don't think you need to lease, no. I think that if you buy a, uh, if you buy a modern electric vehicle designed with a current state-of-the-art in batteries, and that's probably going to be a Tesla, uh, I think you're going to get plenty of years out of that battery. You know what Tesla does afterwards? They recycle those and they put them in their power walls and other things. So I think that we're, we're pretty we're pretty good about. I think I think the time has come. That's my personal That's opinion. Perfect. Yeah, but I think the time has come. I think it's fine to buy. I, I wouldn't have any problem with you buying if that's if that's you know how you're inclined. It's really up to your you know uh, budget and 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 your comfort level. I lease because I figure. Three years from now, it's going to be a, a revolution in this technology. It's all going to change. But uh, it's cost more to lease, of course, in the long run. It's cheaper monthly, but I think it's, you know, you're kind of buying the depreciation. So it'd probably be better to buy, be more economical. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's a, it's a, it's a, f- a topic I can go on and on about, Alex. If you want to, um, I, I, and that's why I ask you because I know you and Sam Gold uh, talk about it all the time. Yeah. But it, you know, me, me thinking, you know, every now and then you see that 
the cost of batteries are so expensive that I was thinking, well, you know, it is the it's yeah. the primary cost of the vehicle, absolutely. Um, okay, okay. But but remember, you're not paying for gas. There's a net benefit, especially as gas prices go up. There's a net benefit to you know you're paying you're paying an effect up front. Uh, it is certainly the case that. Uh, uh, you know, you have to check what electricity prices are in your area. I'm not sure what they're like in Alpharetta. They're very expensive in California, but we have solar panels to to f solve that problem. And, and the the example I was thinking is, you know, like Sam's vehicle. He he's been driving that Miata for for a long time. Yeah, he drives a gas vehicle. Uh, yeah. If something if something breaks, he can fix it and move on. Now, if he was an electric vehicle, can you get the life that he's getting, or something like that, or do we have to just Move it to the side, recycle everything, and start over. No, actually, electric vehicles are much simpler than gas vehicles. Uh, ICE vehicles, internal combustion engines, are incredibly complex. The motors, electric motors, are a very simple, reliable solution. There's no maintenance. Um, I, I think that that's actually a, a misunderstanding. Any modern vehicle... You're going to have to bring it to the dealer. You're not going to the shade. The idea of a shade tree mechanic is kind of gone anyway for ice or electric vehicles. But honestly, electric vehicles are much simpler, much simpler than gas vehicles. You could, if you looked at a comparison uh, between an electric motor and a gas engine, it's mind bending. I mean, uh, we're we're comfortable with gas engines. We've had them for a long time, so we kind of understand them. But I, I don't think that there's I don't think there's a problem with uh, electric vehicle repair or maintenance at all. Perfect, perfect. Okay, yeah. thank you very much for your time. Yeah, I think you're going to like it. I, you know, I don't know if I'd get a used Leaf. Um, no, no, I was using that as an example. I'm not going to go that that far. And and like you mentioned, the the options are always you know with Tesla. Um, and and now that everybody's going to come up with electric vehicles in the next few years, it'd be really interesting. There's so many good choices coming. More it's amazing. It's yeah. Good, yeah. I love my Mustang. I, that thing is a fantastic vehicle. Now, it's early days yet. I don't know what the reliability will be. No one does, but I think it's going to be very good. You don't have to maintain electric motors in the way you have to maintain gas motors. There's no tune-ups. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's very little... Very little to do. Look, if you're interested, Reddit has a very good electric vehicle subreddit. R-E-D-D-I-T dot com slash R slash electric vehicles. Highly recommend it for kind of keeping up on the state of the art and what's going on. And they regularly have arguments about, you know, environmental concerns and, and things like that. It's a good place to go to get the get the full story. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. Hey, a pleasure talking to you, Alex. Thanks. Take care. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Look at this. It's uh, it's space time with Rod Pyle. Did you hear earlier, Rod, a guy called in who was one of the uh, lead engineers on Viking back in 1976? No. Yeah. Did you really get his name? Really cool. Oh, I didn't get his name. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. You might have known him. That he worked that was an for Lockheed Martin. Program. He was a contractor to NASA yeah. on the on the project. Yeah, they built it. Yeah. Yeah, they, they yeah, yeah. NASA builds all the rovers. JPL builds the rovers themselves now, but uh yeah, Martin Marietta built the Vikings and what a job they did. All I know is his first name was Jim. That's all I know. <laughs> a lot of Jims up there. <laughs> Jim. Doesn't narrow it down much. What do you want to talk about today, Space Guy? Well, you know, I, before we're done, uh, make sure that, that you uh, prompt me so I have time to give you a website for your audience at the end. But today, okay. I think we got to talk about Starship and we got to talk about Perseverance because they're both in the news. So we saw the test flight of Starship SN10 last week. It's very this is exciting. The, this is the rocket Elon Musk is building, SpaceX is building to take humans to Mars. Is that right? Right. Yeah. And and the moon. And point-to-point -point transport on Earth, so you can supposedly go from New York to Shanghai in 39 minutes. So wow. Johnny Jett will love that. Wait a minute, we're gonna have rocket flights. Sick people. We're gonna have rocket flights to China. He's saying that you can do point-to-point -point with Starship, so you'll just barely touch orbit, and uh, that it will be about the cost of what it costs to fly first class or business class now in a few years. Wow. Of course, that might be the first Elon, rocket Elon time. That might, yeah. yeah, Elon time is definitely distorted but that might be the first rocket trip many of us take is just instead of an airplane we take a, a rocket wow yeah and if it's not too far off you know these uh, the, the prices at virgin galactic and uh blue origin you know where you're going to be paying between 200 and 300 thousand dollars for a, a, a suborbital hop 
if you can just get on a starship and go point to point on Earth and get that for half an hour of your flight, that's pretty cool. That's I'd good enough for that. me. Yeah. And they're bigger, you know. Yeah. But not yet. So so we saw this test last week. They got up to 6.2 miles, which was their goal. Came down, did the glide like we've been used to seeing. Hit the ground a little hard. Came at about 15 miles an hour, which is a little faster than they wanted. But it landed upright. And it, everything looked good for about eight minutes. It was just sitting there, and it was venting liquid oxygen, doing all the things it's supposed to do. And we were all screaming and yelling and jumping up and down. And, and then suddenly there was this pop on the bottom stage, bottom half, and it uh, went back up in the air and exploded and flipped over. Little, so little, little methane leak. These things yeah, happen. Yeah, there was a leak or something. Yeah, yeah. So they had that explosion. And a couple of the, the uh, foot pads didn't lock properly, so uh, they're going to have to work on that. But, but they're perfecting this. This is the well, process. They are, the thing is... You know, the news media and a lot of people look at this and say, wow, this guy's crazy. He keeps blowing up rockets. But he blows up about 17 rockets in the time it takes most people to get one halfway built. Right. So in the early is... days of uh, our own efforts, of NASA's efforts, oh. did, <laughs> did rockets blow up? All the time. When John Glenn flew uh, that first U.S. orbital mission, the success rate of the Atlas booster, which was uh, like what the Soviets did, it was a re repurposed ICBM they were using to haul a man up into orbit, was about 50%. Yeah. So, you know, he, yeah. he was told by the NASA administrator, said, uh, you know, we got a 50-50 chance of this working out, John. He said, let's go for it. And uh, fortunately, they were they were successful. But that was an interesting rocket, by the way. It looks a lot like Starship because it's also a stainless steel exterior. But that one was so thin that if it wasn't fueled, it would crumple under its own weight. Wow. So you had to keep it f filled up with either nitrogen gas or something to keep it from wow. crumpling. By the way, after uh, the Starship exploded this time, shortly later, some people there spotted one of those Boston Dynamics dog bots, those, those creepy looking dog yeah. robots wandering around the crash site and they were taking apparently gas readings with it to make sure that it was okay to go out look, there look for and hydros red. hydrazine which is of course highly toxic well they don't have any hydrazine oh, what do they one. use is it locks it's uh liquid oxygen and methane and the reason he's using methane is a couple of things one it, it cools down to a slush very well which is what he's doing with both his fuels to get more energy density out of it but it also burns cleaner, so you can just kind of hose out the engines and reuse them instead of having to rebuild them every time. And let, let's also bear in mind, in terms of aspiration, what we're seeing when we watch these Starship test flights is just the top two thirds of the uh, the top third of the rocket. The whole thing's going to be over three hundred, almost four hundred feet tall. So that first stage, which is going to have thirty engines, <laughs> wow, bottom, that's not built of, yet. Is that built? He's uh, in process, and it will probably fly sometime before the end of the year, if we're lucky. Boy, and, when uh, those explode, it's going to be something, huh? Those aren't going to explode. Oh, don't okay. say that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I'm sure a couple will come in back, but not with people. Yeah. But it's just, it's really remarkable, and the speed with which he's doing this. I mean, I'm sure he's driving his people crazy because he's a very driven guy, but it's just spectacular. Yeah. So that was that. And then we've got Perseverance, took its first drive. Uh, went about it uh, moved. 30 oh, my. Feet. The rover yeah. we put on Mars a couple of weeks ago. Mars rover Perseverance. Oh, there's the dog bot. Yeah. Yeah, I got a picture. Uh, this, And by the way, there's a Tesla Model 3 in there, too. Right. Which Elon cleverly positioned. But that's Of course. The, that's the dog ex exploring the uh, site. That's perfect use for that kind of thing. Yeah, the test is kind of the equivalent of a golf cart out in Palm Springs for those guys. Uh, so, so Perseverance took its first short drive, turned around, uh, Speaking took of a bunch golf of carts. Fork, yeah, fork, yeah, big golf, big heavy golf carts. Took its first images of the landing site, so it could see how much scouring the rocket stage did. It looked pretty good, and uh, then they detached the robotic arm because you know each thing that they have to test after they land is kind of the first use of it since it was packed up on Earth. So you want to make sure that arm will unstow and move. So it's a five degree of freedom arm. So they, you know, they moved it around and sideways and up and down and back and forth to make sure everything was working. Everything seems to be perfect. So looks like next up is uh, taking their drive. It doesn't go a lot faster than Curiosity did, the uh, 2012 rover that we landed there. But it is able to drive further on its own, so it'll get a lot more done in a day, which is pretty exciting. How fast and, is it going? Uh, uh, 0.1 mile per hour. Oh, it's really slow. It's really slow. Yeah, so if you go, I've been out to tests, I think, three times, 
and it's it's not moving as fast as your second hand if you line the two up. Oh, it's so it's really slow. Really slow. Yeah, but you know you don't want to make. Well, there's no hurry. <laughs> there's no hurry, and it's navigating itself this time. It's it's uh, to a degree autonomous, so they can basically set it and forget it for the better part of a day and let it do its thing, and it's not going to go driving over a ridge or down into a crater or something like that. So that's great. So their next goal, as far as I understand it, is to start moving towards the uh, big river delta we've talked about before. There's this area. So they wanted to land in the flattest, smoothest area they could. That's what the engineers want. And then the geologists, on the other hand, when they're you know trying to decide where to we go, say, rocks. that's fine, but we want rocks and <laughs> sedimentation layers and all that. So it's heading for that river delta. But pretty soon, it's going to find a nice place to drop the helicopter and let it take flight and see how that how that works. The images we're getting back from Perseverance are remarkable. Wow. In fact, that's what Jim said. We were talking about the Viking. Uh, yeah. He was blown away by the, the quality of the pictures uh, we're getting from Mars. Yeah, they're full 4K, and we got a zoom camera up there that, this time. So yeah. you'll actually be able to zoom in on things. Yeah, and they've always been a little leery of that because zoom lenses can break when you shake them around. As you know, you're a photographer. Yeah, you know, yeah. You tap those things too hard, and suddenly the uh, threads bind up. But they did it this time. And uh, I may have mentioned this before, but early work on that before Curiosity flew, where they were considering using a zoom, was uh, with James Cameron. Oh, no kidding. The director of uh, Avatar. Yeah, yeah. Titanic. He said, you know how, how James Cameron is. He said, I want a zoom lens on the Mars rover. And I said, well, okay. <laughs> and I want 120 frames per second. And I want uh, 8K. Can you, can you give me 8K? And a good love song. And yeah. a good love song, and we're, we're, so, we're golden. <laughs> Rod so, Pyle, uh, Space Guy, he's the author of Space 2.0, editor-in-chief of the National Space Society's magazine, Ad Astra. Find out more about that at space.nss.org. Great to talk to you, Rod. Thank you, sir. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. More calls coming up. Such images just blow me away, the, the pictures we're getting so cool it's it's remarkable wow although it does look like arizona pretty much right well at this point it kind of looks like a rusty walmart parking lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it, they'll get to the cool stuff pretty soon and and they got better wheels this time so they won't get all torn up uh this website i was talking about should i wait till next week oh, or should gosh, i just start with the I'll, podcast no, I'll, I'll do it uh, when we come back what's the website tell me and i'll go there right now oh it's uh, Apollo in real time, one word, dot org. Is this yours? No, this is something that came out a couple of years ago. It's a bunch of crazy guys that got oh, together. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, we showed, I talked yeah, about this. Yeah, yeah, Oh, you yeah. did? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Not like, on the it's, radio it's show. Everything. I talked about it on Twig. So you can watch the whole thing in real time. You can time. watch all, yeah. all, all the whole week of the mission, and it's got the mission transcripts and the live video and all that stuff. And I, I hadn't looked at it in a while. They added Apollo 17, which is the next that. anniversary coming up. I thought, man, boy, you're fast. I thought this is just such a comprehensive and the amount of work that went into it. Well, and I guess what they have, the logs and the telemetry, they have a lot Everything. of data so they can match it all up and make it work. Yeah. Everything but a moon incredible. rock for you. Yeah. Which is what we got to work on next. Just incredible. Wow. And Joe Biden could have a moon rock. I think Leo LaPorte Yeah, I love it that he... Oh, no, I don't need you? a moon rock. I don't need a moon rock. I've seen a moon rock. My dad... I told you my dad had one when I was yeah. a kid. A uh, temporary loan of one. But um, uh, that was good enough. I don't know. I want to... I like this point-to-point -point rocket thing. I'm, I think I'm going to be yeah. going to Beijing uh, in about 10 years on a rocket. And can you imagine doing it in less than an hour? Amazing. Yeah, and, and such a cool view. And if he's building them the way they've been showing the schematic so far, there will be this huge forward-facing window basically oh taking up God. the top top half of the front end of the fuselage so you can go floating up there in zero G if you're on the expensive seats, I guess. So I was saving and, uh, for a world cruise, but I think I'll save now for this, for the point-to-point. -point. Oh, let's do both. Do both? Both? All I right. I miss cruising. I'll be working oh, another time. Oh, I miss it. Do so you like cruises? Oh, you're a boat guy. Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah, but but I mean, it's nice when they take care of all the steering and the docking I and everything. Love. Yeah, see, I, I love the ocean. Day. I love being on the yeah. ocean. So yeah. we get yeah. we like smaller boats, like 500 people at most. We I booked one for a Janu for late January 2022 next year. Yeah, 
to Asia. Just crossing my fingers that we'll be oh. able to do it. Now that's that's point to point in Asia, not from from where you are. In Asia, no, right? yes, it's point to point over the water. <laughs> what a yeah. water! No, we're going to fly in a plane to Hong Kong, and then uh, right. sail to Singapore. But uh, I can't wait. I can't oh, wait. Yeah, those are both great places. Yeah. I've been to Singapore for a couple of decades. It's changed Me quite neither. a bit from where. Yeah, I yeah, I've been there. I've never been to Hong Kong, but I, I'm very excited. Lisa and I can't wait. So, well, oh, that is so exciting. So, do you do you have you do you go on cruises? Have you been on cruises? Yeah, I've probably been on six, six or seven nice. of them, and I enjoy them all, but I always come back a little plump. Because <laughs> how could you not, right? I started my diet today from our cruise a year from now. <laughs> oh. our, our cabin is around the corner from the pizza, the very good Napoli's uh, uh, pizzeria. Um, Spaconopoli, it's called. Oh. Uh, on the boat, and it's which uh, cruise line? It's Silver Sea. I really we're re big fans of Silver Sea. Oh, those are nice. Yeah. Oh God, I love it. We went to the Galapagos on Silver Sea, and uh, we just did one to the Middle East on Silver Sea. So I think I've been trying all of them, trying to pick one because I want that world cruise. They do an expedition world cruise that see that goes to very oh, unusual spots. So I was scheduled to do an Apollo anniversary cruise <sighs> this year, but well, there you go. <laughs> It was it was going to be me and a couple of astronauts, as mission control oh, guys. My we God, wow jealous. the audience. But, hey, save that oh, website for next week. I won't. I won't steal okay. your thunder. Thanks, Rod. Tomorrow is International Women's Day. This is International Women's Month, all month long. Professor Laura celebrating. Thank you, Professor Laura. Uh, and I will be celebrating too. I will find a woman and celebrate. By probably my wife and my daughter. No, what? That came out wrong. I'm sorry. 88, 88, ask Leo. I'm, forget I, it's hopeless. It's, is it? It's hopeless. I'm, I'm hopeless. Susan on the line uh, from Minneapolis. Hi, Susan. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I apologize in advance. All right. I think before I'm going to do my Windows question, I want to ask something else because I don't want to run out of time. Okay. I'm trying to find out how you make a GoFundMe account go viral. You hear about all this. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> we're trying to raise we're trying to raise money for my daughter's dog who had to have a blood transfusion. Aww. And if if you go look at uh, helpdixie.com, you'll see her. There you go. That's how you do it. You call a national radio show, <laughs> and you say, "Go to helpdixie.com." D i x i e. Oh yeah, I see it right now. Oh, what kind of dog is Dixie? She is a good question. It's my daughter's dog. She's a mutt. <laughs> She's pretty, though. Oh. I got her from a rescue center in, in Texas, and afterwards I found out she had Lyme disease because she yeah. was Oh. trying so hard to... Well, I'll put in a little money for you. It's hard. You know, GoFundMe is a great idea, but this is the problem in general. If you called and said, how do I go viral on TikTok, or how do I go viral, you know, on YouTube, it's the same... Thing. I don't know. It's uh seems kind of hit or miss. I know, and I don't know how. I, I didn't know if GoFundMe had something where you could upgrade, where they no. promoted. No. No. I don't know. No. It's just you got to tell the world. You know what? You found the best way possible, Susan. You called me. You are the best. And you said, <laughs> helpdixie.com. That's probably the best way you could do it. Yeah, I just got that name and... <laughs> good for you, and I and uh, good luck. I, I, I it's going to be expensive uh, procedure, so it's very I, expensive. I'm sympathetic. Yeah. Did it. Just now I got to pay the bills. Oh gosh. Well, I'm glad they did it. That's good. Yeah, that's good. <sighs> it's so expensive. I know. I've done the same thing. I've uh, we had a lovely pappy on that had uh, back problems. We we paid for very expensive surgery, and it unfortunately didn't make much of a difference. And uh, it's a yeah. sad, sad thing. It's so so hard. Yeah, it's very hard. You love these little furries. So what can I do for you with regard to Microsoft? All right. My Windows screen keeps jumping. And I can't, if I try to click on a drop down, it won't do it. That's not good. <clears throat> no, I can't, and I can't find the cause of it. <laughs> wow. Your Windows screen. So the whole screen is jiggling around? It just kind of, moved, like if I try to move... To the left, it will go back to where it was. Um, is again, it the ma is it the mouse that's jumping or the screen? What you see on the screen? The screen. Okay, so that's uh, and, uh, 
But that's a good, there could be a number of things. Uh, I would, the easiest, quickest thing to check is the cable. Is, uh, is it a laptop or a desktop? No, it's a laptop. Oh, well, you can't check the cable. There is, however, a cable. And often in laptops, it's the first thing to fail. If you think about it, you know, you've got a hinge on the laptop to the screen, between the screen and the keyboard. There is a very thin, flat cable that leads from the bottom of the computer where the processor is up into the screen. And as you open and close, and how old is this laptop? Well, maybe four years, but it just sits on my desk like it's a uh, desktop. I don't it's think ne it's never been opened or closed or taken anywhere. Not very much. No. Yeah. Well, it's it's possible it's not that, although uh, that is a very common problem uh, with laptop displays, uh, and uh, that could be loose or it could be there is a fray it's frayed and the connection isn't perfect and that's causing it to jiggle. So that's one thing is a hardware issue, and the easiest cheapest thing to check is the cable. You c you could do it yourself what about if you the mouse if I try to check a well you're saying but you're saying the screen's moving not the not the mouse jiggling with the whole screen, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's not the mouse. Uh, to do a drop down, it won't. Like, yeah, the that's because this, that's because the computer, you're clicking on what looks like the place to click, but that's not the place to click because the screen's displaying it wrong. That's a display issue, I think. It'll show it for a half a second. It yeah, a yeah. Uh, it's uh, so. It's a display issue. Could be the cable. That's the cheapest, easiest thing to fix. Could be the video uh, circuitry. That's uh, that's not easy to fix because usually that's part of the motherboard. So you need a whole new nut motherboard. It could be the driver software. So the next thing to check, if it, you know, I would check the cable first. But another thing you can check is to make sure it's not the uh, a flaw in the operating system in the software, which it could be. To do that, generally, what I tell people is it's a very handy thing to have a USB key that you can boot to. You know, when you first start up your computer, you can press a key, escape, delete, F1, F12, F11, it's different on different computers, that'll allow you to set the boot order. You can set the boot order to be a USB device. You'll need an operating system in that USB device. The easiest thing to do is download a, a version of Linux, say Ubuntu, that's free, ubuntu.org, U-B-U-N-T-U.org. It'll have instructions on how to put make a bootable version of Linux on that USB key. Then what you'll do is you shut the computer down, start it up, hit that key, choose boot to the USB device. The, a different operating system with completely different software will boot up and run. Now, if the screen's still jiggling, great. You've eliminated software issues. It's not Windows. It's not the drivers. Because it's happening with other operating systems, it's hardware. Now you've got to figure out the hardware. And as I said, at this point, there are only a few things you can do. One is to check that ribbon cable. Everything else, checking the screen itself or checking the video card, would have to be done by, uh, probably done by uh, a repair person. Um, I, you know, ideally the company that manufactured it. Um, four years old, they're probably not going to be able to do it. Another suggestion, in case it's just a driver issue, is to try booting into safe mode. In fact, that's probably the, f I should have said that first, because if you reboot the computer, now again, you have to hold down the shift key uh, until you get that boot menu, boot with uh, networking enabled, you'll get into a version of Windows that has a very simple driver, the VGA driver. And uh, if there's a driver issue, that'll diagnose it. If, it. if there's no problem in safe mode, then it's a driver issue. That would be probably the, your your best hope. That's easy to fix. That's just a software issue. So you can see what happens. This is a, a process of elimination. Troubleshooting means going through the things. I always do the easiest things first. So let's do this in order. Easiest to hardest. Safe mode. Easiest by far. Uh, then booting to another operating system, Linux or something else like that. A little more complicated, but doesn't require opening the system or modifying any hardware. Uh, if the problem persists after those first two, after safe mode and booting to another operating system, now you're uh, at hardware. You've eliminated any software problems. So that means you've got to open up the case, maybe take a look at that cable, maybe see if the video card's performing nominally, maybe the maybe the screen itself is damaged. All of those things are going to require a repair person, in my opinion. That's the That's kind of the process of troubleshooting, you know? Going through one by one all the potential causes, starting with the easiest first, crossing your fingers, hoping it is the easiest one. And uh, as you eliminate, as they say, as Sherlock Holmes said, once you eliminate 
all the possibilities, whatever remains, how, however unlikely is the cause. Uh, wiggling the hinge might be a way of diagnosing a, a, a cable problem. That's somebody suggesting that in the chat room. Thank you, Professor Laura. Have a wonderful International Woman's Day tomorrow. Thank you uh, to Kim Schaffer. Same to you, our phone angel. Thanks to all of you for joining me. Uh, I'm Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. Don't forget, techguylabs.com all week long. Have a great Geek Week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.